right, hello everyone, and welcome to the first session of the All Eldari Party, or Eldar Party, whichever you'd prefer. Uh, before we get to the meat of today's session, uh, I do want to say a few things. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I have to give the disclaimer that if you're not familiar with 40k, uh, it is, by its very nature, rather grimdark. That means that this game will sometimes probably be dealing with dark and or adult themes. Uh, so if you're uncomfortable with such things, you know, this is your warning. Uh, next up, I would say that it's, a, you know, we're not perfect here. Uh, we're only human, which means that we're probably going to have to look up rules or we might just get things wrong wholesale. Uh, my main goal is to keep things moving as the game master. Uh, sort of a, you know, the rule zero, the prefer uh, provo ah, proverbial rule zero. I can speak today. Um, as in, you know... If I think a judgment will be better to keep the narrative flowing and the roleplay fun, um, I'm going to go for that over written rules. But, you know, I, I do try to stick to the to the rules best I can. And, of course, because, you know, it's been a while since I've done Wrath and Glory, I do welcome pointers and rules corrections, you know, as long as it's done in a, a civil manner. Um, the other point I need to raise before I begin the opening monologue is that uh, I will be doing my best to sort of stick to canon Again, so long as it leads to good roleplay. Um, however, because, you know, there's only so much Eldar or Eldar canon out there, um, and I have not memorized all of it, I might sometimes be doing things that don't match up with Black Library or things like that. Again, focus here is on fun and keeping the game moving. Uh, last thing is that the goal of this group is that we are going to try doing every week, uh, Tuesdays, right at the same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, which is uh, GMT minus four. And I think that's all I have to say in terms of housekeeping uh, before we begin. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I think we're all very familiar with how this starts, but in the grim dark future of the 41st millennium, there is only war. This war takes place across the galaxy in the darkness of space, on a million worlds, and within the depths of every human soul. Mere survival is hailed as victory, yet there is no peace among the stars, except perhaps in oblivion. Approximately a century ago, a galaxy-spanning terror in reality, known as the Great Rift, opened. What caused its creation for sure is unknown. Popular theories include the destruction of Cadia, the awakening of Yanid, and possibly even the ruinous powers reacting to the rebirth of a certain Ultramar uh, space marine. Whatever the case, this warp storm cut a, a swath across the galaxy and stranded countless Imperium worlds without the holy light of the Astronomicon. This new region of space was christened as the Imperium Nihilus, or the Dark Imperium. Now, humanity is not the only species under attack in the Dark Imperium. The Eldar are facing their own crisis in their bid to be saved from the predation of Slanesh, or She Who Thirsts. The Yanari, worshippers of the god Yanid, have gathered allies across every facet of Eldari life in their bid to re resurrect Yanid and defeat Slanesh. And that, players, is where you guys come in. You have each heard the call, uh, the call for aid from the Yanari, and all of you have traveled to Craftworld Ostera to provide whatever assistance you can. Now, Ostara is a stark contrast from the usual glittering craft worlds that you might be used to. Uh, it is dark and otherwise illuminated by an ever-present twilight. And as you arrive and as you sort of step off uh, your vessels or however the hell you get to the craft world, uh, it only takes a simple attunement to an infinity circuit to know that you are expected within the Garden of Eternal Shadows. And, you know, it's not that hard. You know, your Eldar, it's if you get lost, you can just consult the Infinity Circuit. Uh, but when you arrive, you see that you have a, uh, the area is a luscious plot of midnight green grass surrounded by tall shrubs. There is a Wrathbone fountain that stands in the back right of the garden, offering a gentle tickling sound of water. Uh, the smaller flower bushes are bordered by larger ones, giving sort of this layered appearance to the garden. The flowers themselves are exotic even to the most traveled among you. You cannot place where some of them might have come from. And there is this sort of path of marble stones that loop around the garden, giving people an elegant way to explore the garden and all it has to offer. And it is here that we begin our tale. Uh, all four of you arrive more or less at the same time, so let's start at the top in Discord and work our way down. So, uh, 
we'll start with uh, Fat Lips. So if you would introduce yourself uh, out of character, uh, then introduce yourself in character. Uh, maybe say a few words about their appearance, any backstory you want on record, and feel free to embellish. There, there are no time limits here, other than you know, just don't you know, start reading essays at us. So yeah, Fat Lips, <laughs> let's uh, let's have you take it away. <laughs> well, don't worry. I don't think I'm going to be reading any essays. But yes, my name is Fat Lips. I'm a pretty cool guy, um, and I'm going to be playing sexy Corsair Prince Evan. Um, getting into what he looks like, I don't know, your sort of typical kind of, like, edgy, emo, like, Dark Eldar almost. Uh, like, long black hair, you know, tattoos, all that jazz. Um, but, uh, I guess a few th interesting things about him, um, he's kind of cowardly, <laughs> which I think will play well into his role as uh i guess kind of the face of the group as well as uh the squishy dodge tank um so we'll see how that works out but uh yeah um i'm not sure there's too much else anyone needs to know right now about my character but i will uh i will introduce myself in character now if that's cool with you guys sure so do, I was just before. Do it. Do I see anyone before me? Or uh, we'll say that since uh, you went first, uh, you have just arrived, and maybe a few seconds behind you is going to be Bishop's character. Okay. Who you will um, notice because he's colourful. Ah, nice. Well, I guess uh, I guess not. Sort of seeing anyone around me like immediately. I guess I'm just going to sort of walk, sort of enjoy the enjoy the sort of view and the nice scenery around me, and see it's kind of actually kind of cool calm and i'm just gonna say uh hello friends uh, anyone here all right and it's at that time that bishop your character arrives yep oh i'm bishop i'm the one in new zealand with a weird schedule <laughs> and uh i'll be playing glaive who's a warlock and uh sort of uh, special sort of uh h half and half telepathy and stabbing things with psychic and uh, he's from uh, the minor crap world of Tierval, who's which is one of the ones that stays off on the side and just doesn't get involved. They're very much about the whole extreme patience approach, which uh, does not sit well with Glaive because he's a bit of a young, hot-headed sort of, sort for an elder. Yeah, his opinion is, you know, if the Monkai are doing a better job of fighting chaos than the Eldari, something is wrong. So uh, he's sort of left home to roam the galaxy to smite fools and stab demons. And theoretically, there are a finite number of fools in the galaxy. You know, theoretically. <laughs> All right. So, Glaive, so, uh, as you walk in, you do see uh, Avon. And of course, it's going to take me a little bit to get names right. Uh, so you see Evan. Uh, they are, uh, you know, kind of looking around, uh, trying to see uh, who's there. And yeah, you see two characters, and I'll let you roleplay for a little bit before we uh, move on to the next person. Yep, so this warlock strides in with vibrant sky blue robes and gold edging on his armor. Alrighty, um, I think seeing this, this particularly sparkly fellow, I'm immediately going to go up and go, uh, hello, friend, it's, uh, actually, you look kind of familiar. Have we met before? Uh, possibly, possibly. I've been around. I've been around quite a lot. I've roamed from place to place. Yes, yes. Was it? Now, you don't get to Kamara much, do you? <laughs> oh, no, certainly probably not. Sorry, <laughs> it's foolish of me. And apart from anything else, I'm wearing a faceplate, so that probably doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Ah, right. Yes, sorry. Glaive, I, warlock I, of Tierval, holds out a hand. Ah, yes. And sorry, Glaive, was it? Yes. Ah, very nice to meet you, Glaive. So, tell me about yourself. Oh, basically, uh, something of a mercenary, I suppose. I essentially go wherever there are demons to stab. Quite, well, mercenary part, quite uncommon for a warlock, don't you think? Or... Hmm. Uh, let's just say the elders of Tierval are... Uh... Con content to sit on their rears and not do a great deal, and that doesn't sit well with me. Well, I mean, that sounds just fine to me, but <laughs> each to his own. 
Hmm. Uh, any idea who we're supposed to be meeting here? And it, um, is, it is at that moment uh, we're going to go to Michael. So, Michael, if you would introduce yourself as your character walks in. Hey there, Michael. He has French about this uh, this game. Uh, so, in contrast with uh, Glaive walking all colorful and that, uh, Isenrian, which is the character I'm going to be playing, is a warlock of Ultue and is very, very dark compared to his uh, previous uh the previous world that entered is all in all dressed in black, full armor, full helmet with the old mohawk, uh, bits of white and red every uh, every now and then, but mostly black. Uh, is is wielding well, not wielding at the moment, but uh, sheathed out two swords, uh, one regular sword and one that uh, Glaive would recognize as uh, which blade was it? And of course, carries the uh, usual shuriken pistol, and. Uh, as he walks, uh, as he walks up, totally looks like someone that has had a martial life before uh, whatever is happening here, and uh, you can see his gaze going left and right as he's as if he's uh, just scanning the entire area for threats. Uh, is about six two, uh, quite lean. Well, I mean, we're all lean here. Nobody's beefy on, on the Eldari, uh, and. Uh, as he enters, he, he sees uh, Aiden and, and Glaive and just nods and starts walking towards them. Ah, this must be the suitably drab fellow here now. Uh, nice to meet you, friend. Hello. I assume we're here for the same thing. Oh, sorry, you're not in charge, are you? Oh, I guess not. <laughs> no. Mm. Talk to fellow, isn't he? Right. That's what I was... No, it's... Look, it's fine. He's he's one of the Ulthwe, yes, I believe, yeah? That is correct. I'm hard, I'm finding it hard to pick out the different shades of black, you see. <laughs> well, that is the purpose, is it not? Yeah, it's fair, fair point, fair point. Uh, so, who are you then? My name is Isenrian. What about you? Uh, and... Uh, w Warlock as well, I assume? Yes, uh, recent, recent, uh, change for me. Oh, do go on. That is all I'll share at this moment. Oh, fair, fair enough. Well, anyway, uh, Glaive Ananel, Glaive for short. He nods. Oh, and, uh, Corsair Prince Evan, nice to meet you. Oh, you're a prince. Uh, yeah, sorry, didn't I mention? I usually do that first. It's also hard because I usually have someone coming in and announcing me beforehand, but uh, I can't. Uh, I was sort of not really sure if that was appropriate. Why is a prince uh, here with the likes of us? Well, I'm sure you can read my mind and find out anyway, can't you? It's a bit rude. Oh, well, you're very respectful. Um, well, actually, that's a. Uh, yeah, no, it's a bit of a long story. I might, I might hold off for, for now. If that's all right. Fair enough. It's all time to talk about it on the way to wherever it is we're going. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. After a few drinky poos, of course. Is that all of us? Well, as it so happens, our final member, Harris, uh, if you would care to introduce yourself as you enter the garden as well. So my name is Harris, the guy with the really, really deep voice. <laughs> I am playing Seneca for this one. Character is from Craftworld Eondin, uh, which a lot of people should know as the Craftworld that basically got eaten. Uh, the character I'm rolling with is going to have been walking on the path of the healer for quite some time, but when most of the people on your Craftworld end up getting eaten, that doesn't work so well. So he's just trying to transition into life as a spirit seer to be able to repair yeah uh tyranids so the tyranids attacked it and it was actually thanks to a corsair prince that it stopped getting eaten so we like them but just trying to figure out how wraithbone and everything in between works and in the meantime keeping what's left of my craft world afloat and unlike all the yellows that we've got 
or unlike all the blacks we've got, I'm going to be in a striking yellow and blue. Mm hmm. Who's this colorful chap? Oh, well, him. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, he's obviously not as colorful as you. I mean, you're you're radiant. It hurts to look at you. I did not choose my craft world's colors, unlike you choosing your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, no, I understand. But what's your what's your name, friend? Seneca. Oh, well met, Seneca. Seneca. Are you the one in oh, charge here? That would oh, be yeah, no. yes, yes. Yes. That'd be a no. I do not know who's in charge. Ah. Uh, GM question. Uh, GM answer. Uh, do we know about the fate of his uh, cross world? Um, is, that, is, that, is that like general, general knowledge? I think it would be. Um, yeah. So feel free to color that in character, but yeah, I, I think it's probably fair to say that you know the fate of a craft world going down. Yeah. Especially, especially one as major as the as the yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, so Isenian is 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 will approach uh, Seneca and me and extend his hand. I mean, Isenian. Uh, I was sorry to hear about uh, the Devourer getting to you. I'll uh, take the handshake, return it, and nod. At least our battle's over for the time being. Unlike the craft world. <laughs> yeah, does it, does it ever stop? I think I'm going to turn to Glaive. <laughs> and be like, oh, he's really forward, isn't he? I wasn't going to bring it up. But whatever, I mean, I don't know. Well, no, I mean, it's not, it's not exactly seen. secret knowledge. Well, seen as you know, much as I've seen. He's reminded about it all the time, does he? I mean, I Ford's about all that we have left, is it not? <laughs> And uh, it is at that moment uh, that, like, Liquid Shadow, a figure steps out from around the fountain. And you're going to recognize them, who, who they are, very quickly. Uh, they are clad in full body armor, red in color, and sporting multiple spirit stones at regular intervals. A shaggy mane of blue-colored fur rests atop their left shoulder, a blue cape streaming behind them. In their hand is a weapon that all of you immediately recognize as being the Crone Sword Asuvar. And Ooh, this individual, man. the Vizark, as you would know him, says, Greetings to you, my kin. I thank you all for journeying this far. <laughs> Bow greatly before him graciously. Bow likewise. Bow even graciously, uh, and can I actually do a persuasion test to, like, show how humble I am? It, sure, let's do first roll of the campaign, let's make it, uh, difficulty, sure, let's just keep it at a three, why not? Uh, here we go. Roll to schmooze. Is, no. is, is that a ruin symbol? That is a ruin. <laughs> yes. On a wrath die? Yeah, wow. and zero. Wow. Oh, no, one six. So yeah, that's a, a strong two. start. That... That is a thing. Well, good for you is that uh, I'm already at max ruin, so... <laughs> um, but the Vizark, you know, of course, he's wearing a helmet, but he, he does let out a, a soft chuckle and says, please, please, you need not uh, bow before me. We are all equals here. Uh, but I will get straight to the point, as both your time and my time is very valuable. There is a threat growing on the world of Uvis, uh, out of character U-V-I-S. Uh, one of the Imperium's so-called black ships has crashed on the Virgin World and freed the primitive unbound psychers within. In their bid for survival, they have drawn the attention of She Who Thirsts. And as the Vizark says, She Who Thirsts, uh, those of you with spirit stones would feel your stones pulsing in, in uh, almost reaction to, to these words. Uh, he continues on to say... While most of these chattel will burn of their own volition, there is one among them that continues to appear in our runes at a very alarming rate. Uh, this individual is known as Lexus Lopata, and I'll paste it in uh, text chat in a moment. Uh, he possesses a great power within him, power that, if left unchecked, will alter the strands of destiny and cause a chain of events that will cause a great suffering for our people. Your task, therefore, is to deal with Lexus, or Lapata, by whatever means necessary. While it would be highly ideal to slay all of the Monkai with psychic potential, 
The humans are already launching ships to recover the survivors. Thus, your primary focus here should be on Lopata. Disturb the other Monkai as little as you can so as not to draw the attention of she who thirsts. Now, of course, if you have any questions, now is the time. Hmm. So, uh, when you say... So, what, what sort of, uh, infrastructure and society exists on this world already? Well, uh, as I said, it is a virgin world, which means that it is not even, well, prior to the ship being crashed on the surface, uh, no faction, neither Eldar, nor Orc, no, nor Tyranid, nor Monkai, there was no claim on this planet. Hmm. Uh, so how long have they been there? That is fuzzy. Uh, it is strange. Uh, something surrounding this ship in general has made it very difficult to divine the ruins, but in general, we believe it has been there for approximately two to three years. Long enough to establish a cult. Correct. Yeah. Long mm. enough to establish some defenses. Yes, what sort of defenses or combatants can we expect? Well, uh, I would say that you probably are going to have to deal with uh, whatever psychic or psyker uh, potential... Let me say that again. You will probably have to deal with unbound uh, psychers who know not of their own limits and know not of their own power. Uh, you will also probably have to deal with whichever of the quote-unquote normal Monkai survived the crash. And if things are as bad as the runes say, you could be dealing with anything from warp beasts to full-on demons. Awfully fortunate you brought. Yeah, that's 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 to all the other warlocks. Plenty of psychic potential. I feel a little left out. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to drive the ship. Yes, that's right. Uh, what sort of a sh vessel is going to be taking us there? Are we going to the... Well, I have already arranged for Farseer Rari that will see you to Uvis on her Shadow Hunter, the Yatira. And I'll again put that in chat in a moment. Uh, she is waiting for you at the Dock of Crystal Beginnings uh, whenever you are done here. Mm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, any other support we can expect? Uh, that will be between you and Farseer Rari to discuss. Uh, you will, of course, have to uh, plead with her if you want, say, uh, Wraith Portal support. But otherwise, she's just ferrying you across space for the time being. Fair enough, yeah, I'm right. sure I can Simple do the, enough. Uh, the uh, old pirate charm on her. I think with that, I'm going to be like, who's hungry? Are we uh, heading off now, or you want to hang around here? What, what's the plan, fellas? I think expedience is preferable. Yeah, so let, let, let's see what food's available on the Yatara. Agreed. And the Vizark oh, nods. That's fine. Let's, let's rock. Yeah. Uh, the Vizark nods and says... Before you go, my kin, I do have something of a care package for each of you. And uh, from beneath his cloak, uh, his cape, he pulls out four little, uh, I would call them boxes. They're kind of more like flimsy cardboard, but he hands one to each of you. And he says, though some of you, I can tell, already have your own spirit stone, I found it important to give you an unfilled one as well, just in case... By, for whatever reason, you lose your original. You also find within that package, each of you has been given a spirit stone containing the soul of our departed kin. Now, it will take time for you to learn how to call upon the, our kin for guidance, but it is something that you can master over time. You can consider this a, shall we say, advanced payment. Uh, for not only your eventual success, but hopefully for what will be a long-lasting partnership. Oh, and the last thing you'll find is a Bone Singer shard. You may take it with the Inari's blessing. All right. Oh, mm. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I'm just going to be flustered by all the lovely, lovely gifts. Particularly since I sold my uh, spirit stone a while back. But, uh, <laughs> Thanks. I mean, that does sound like a very dark Eldar thing to do. Mm -hmm. Right? I'll, I'll turn over the Bone Singer shard. Just observe it. Uh, it is, you know, your standard uh, 
tool for manipulating Wraithbone and other Eldar bits of construction. Uh, it is a very crucial tool because without it, you cannot perform maintenance on any Eldar technology. At least I think so. Yeah, it's mm. kind of important. Alrighty. Let's go. Hello. Let's go, fellas. All right. So, uh, the Vizark again nods and says, May you walk in Isha's grace. And then, as mysteriously and as liquidy as he appeared, he sort of slips into the shadows of the garden. Oh, he's so cool. <laughs> and yeah. And so, off we hit. so. Uh, yeah, so we'll skip ahead a little bit because, you know, as much as it's fun to fly uh, little flyers around in the middle of the craft world, you know. Uh, just, uh, just to make sure, mm -hmm. in the box, so we had the Bonesinger Shard, we had an empty Spirit Stone, and then one that was filled. Yes, that is correct. Awesome. All right. So uh, we're going we're gonna to skip ahead to you guys arriving at the Dock of Crystal Beginnings. And uh, like most uh, Eldar docks on Craft Worlds, it's a very opulent affair. Uh, lots of shiny uh, wraithbone to go around. Lots of, uh, shall we say, colorful statues, bits of artwork. Uh, there's also almost like a, a mini bazaar that is set up along the dock of people hawking their wares uh, that have been either brought in recently or that they're trying to sell to people leaving. Uh, but again, it's very simple for you to find the Ultaria. And when you do, you of course see that it is a Shadowhunter class vessel. And actually waiting before you uh, on the entrance to the gantryway is who must be uh, the Farseer herself. Now, Rary is clad in unusual clothing, uh, but is otherwise recognizable as a Farseer by her psychic presence alone. Uh, to sort of describe her appearance, um, she would not be a miss on a human uh, rogue trader vessel. Um, she is definitely dressed more in a Monkai style than in Eldar style. Um, lots of golds, lots of whites, uh, lots of little skulls, you know, interplaced throughout the, uh, the outfit she has on. Uh, even has high heels for whatever reason. And if you look very carefully, uh, you see that those heels are actually serrated. So they are very much weapons in and of, the, of themselves. Uh, like most of you, uh, sorry, even, uh, you're kind of the odd man out here. Uh, like the warlocks of the group, she does carry her own witchblade, and you see that she is lacking the uh, shuriken pistol for whatever reason. Uh, so how would you like to approach her? Straightforward. <laughs> Just going, walking straight to her. A sport straightforward. Okay. Yep. Same, same sort right. of deal. Oh, you look like you've just come back from some sort of mission. Hmm. Well, as uh, it is with our people, our work is never truly done. I take it you are the fellows I'm to take to Uvis, yes? All right. That's All right. right. Very well. Then, before you board my ship, I only have a few rules. Number one, if you're going to fight, you do it for not blood and not for shall we say, anything that would draw the attention of the Ruinous Powers. Meaning that if you wish to, you know, spar or do a gentlemanly duel, then you are, of course, welcome to. But again, you're to keep it contained. Rule number two. As captain, whatever I say goes. I tend not to exercise this authority. I like to keep a sort of a open crew, uh, an open hierarchy, but when I say to do something, it is very crucial that you do it. Finally... And she does actually crack a smile this time. Finally, uh, please, for the love of all that is holy among our people, do not ever, ever ask about why there is a cat on the bridge. What? Oh, uh, Gla Glaive starts to and then thinks better of it. Uh. Well, gentlemen, unless you have any questions, we can... Get, get on board, and we can get this journey started. Yes, I actually just had one question. I seem to have misplaced my sword. You wouldn't have one I could borrow, do you? You mean one like this? And she motions at the uh, the witchblade. Oh, it doesn't have to have all the the psychic potential of that, of course. But uh, just anything would do. Mm. Any sort of. Yes, I uh, I believe we have some spares on my ship. I will, of course, give one to you for no issue. Sick. 
Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. And, uh, say, hey, do you, uh, you don't want to buy a spirit stone, do you? <laughs> oh, so you're the one that uh, the Vizark told me about. <laughs> well, gentlemen, come this way. And yeah, uh, I'm assuming you guys follow her up the gantry way into her ship. And uh, she actually takes you to the bridge to start off with. Which, you know, I tried to find an alien bridge that will work, so I know this is technically a Star Trek bridge, but sue me. Um, so, in in uh, 40k world, that's foul alien tech. Yeah, you know. Um, so, of course, you do see that there are uh, other Corsairs here, and pretty much like every Corsair vessel, there's Eldar from all walks of life. Uh, really, the only colors that are missing here are Harlequins. Uh, you are seeing some dark Eldar colors. You are seeing, you know, typical Corsair colors. Uh, the one thing that you will note is that those who are, um, you know, not wearing what are essentially witch outfits, so barely nothing at all, uh, those that are, you know, sitting at consoles or, you know, running things back and forth, they all wear the same white and gold colors that Rary herself is wearing. Um, it's probably a safe assumption to say that Rary... Uh, is not only a Farseer, but either is currently or has in a past life been a Corsair princess of herself. Um, but uh, she does lead the four of you uh, to the bridge, which you are free to stand wherever you would like. And uh, she takes a seat uh, in her big old chair, and she motions for the helm officer to begin uh, casting off the lines and stealing... No, you can't sit on her. Um, oh, come on, you sit wherever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, basically getting the ship ready to depart. And, uh, you know... Is there a cat on the bridge? There is indeed a cat on the bridge. Uh, I forget the official term for it. I think it's a Grinx? Grinx. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, it's one of those, you know, actually, like, psychic potential cats Uh that are common among common among Eldar. Because okay. yeah, my uh, my next question was going to be to like subtly use Sidious to see is that thing psychic? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, I would say yes. that even without needing to do a roll, you would be able to tell that. Yeah, that that cat's got some psychic potential. Uh, but since you guys have brought it up, uh, whoever would care to do so, uh, if you would like to roll me a, let me make sure I'm saying it's the right skill. Uh, if you would like to roll me a awareness, or I'll even let you do an investigation, uh, the DN here is going to be a three. And again, this is just to get everyone comfortable with rolling. This roll doesn't really mean too much. You know, we're just making sure everything works. Okay, so it looks like Glaive, uh, Avon, and Seneca. So pretty much everyone but Asenrian. Uh, you notice that around the cat's collar is not only one spirit stone, but a total of three. Cat's yeah. been around the, been around for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's like there is like actually quite a few people on the bridge, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean it's I, I I didn't put tokens down for everyone, but yeah. assume there's like about ten to twenty other Eldar running around the bridge at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So what are they like? What are they? I guess what I'm trying to ask is like, do these guys look like they know how to party. Oh yeah, like these guys look like they are both consummate professionals, but at the same time, like just listening in on their conversations and how they talk to one another, you get the sense that they've been through quite a lot of of trials and tribulations together. Um, they seem to be very tight knit, and although you know they're giving you guys space because you're new. Um, you know, a few do look at you, give you a courteous nod, or, you know, kind of wave at you a little bit, you know, generally recognizing your presence. Awesome. Um, can I spend a wrath mm -hmm. for a narrative declaration to say that I have some, like, booze on me? You may certainly do so. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'll hold that off until I think a moment comes up. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. But I'll, I'll get rid of the wrath, obviously. Yeah. And again, uh, I guess this actually is a good time to explain uh, how we're going to handle that. So, uh, Wrath, I'm going to let you guys handle on your own, and I'm going to trust you on that. Uh, what you'll see on screen, uh, again, I showed you guys uh, before the session started, but for those who are, of course, tuning in live. Uh, so the first sort of, uh, sort of tokens you have on the right-hand side of the map screen, uh, those are your glory tokens. 
And because there's four players, uh, the max you guys can have at a time is eight. Uh, the tokens underneath of that are ruin tokens, and the only one who can see how many ruin tokens I have is, well, me on my GM screen. Uh, you should be able to see that I do have tokens, but again, not how many. Um, so yeah, uh, the uh, the Farseer's crew uh, has the ship launched in probably under about 15 minutes. And the ship, as you see sort of on a view screen, on multiple view screens in fact, uh, the ship starts heading towards the sort of inlaid uh, webway portal that is built into the craft world. And as it passes through the threshold, there's that sort of momentary feeling of disorientation. Uh, but uh, uh, after a moment, it passes, no worries. And you can see that you are now within the swirling vortex of psychic potential that is the webway. Now again, it's not the same as going through the warp. It's completely different uh, in that you don't really have to worry too much about, you know, shall we say, demons breaking your Geller field down. But, you know, it is still a... Uh, a dive through uh, sort of a subspace type deal. And once you're cleanly into the space, uh, the Farseer turns to each of you and says, Well, you are, of course, welcome to remain here on the bridge for our, our journey. I anticipate it will probably take somewhere on the order of three to five cycles. Uh, cycles, of course, being days in this instance. Um, so you, of course, are, again, free to remain here on the bridge. Uh, if not... Uh, I have prepared quarters for you on deck four. Uh, it is a suite, which means you will be having to share, but it is a fairly spacious a fairly spacious suite. I thought I would give you guys the space to get to know each other and otherwise become acclimated with my crew because, as the Vizark told me, told if me. you do a good job here, uh, we will be working very well in the future. Oh, fantastic. Sounds exciting. Uh, what do you fellas do for fun around here? Hmm. <laughs> Well, uh, if uh, my senses do not fail me, uh, I believe you have a certain amount of liquor on you, yes? I mean, probably not enough for everyone, but yeah, I got a bit. Hmm. Well, you should know that uh, towards the end of every cycle, I tend to have a crew mess, as it were. Uh, it's, of course, hard to find a space to accommodate all of the crew, but I do make it a point to go around and share a drink with at least every room that is uh, currently eating and consuming. Sounds fun. Big, uh, big shindig. I was, any sort of, I mean, do you, do you gamble? Do you sport? Anything? Well, you know, there are, there are spaces for you to, uh, you know, play things like, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the game that they played in the, the Path of Eldar book I read. Um, the name is escaping me, but, uh, you know, she lists off a, a variety of hobbies, a variety of, you know, like yeah. pastimes you could do kind of a thing. Uh, she again does mention that there are spaces for duels, there are spaces for you to practice um, your psychic weavings, uh, things for you to tinker, you know, everything like that. I'll come offer to roll some stones. Yeah. Awesome. Well, sounds like a plan. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get some gambling going. Um, can I... Like, is everyone here look really, really busy? <laughs> like, well, now that uh, now the ship is in the webway, uh, traveling along, uh, the crew is definitely way more relaxed um, because at this point, the navigator just has to make sure you're flying in the right direction and push buttons every so often, and the ship sort of flies itself. Nice and okay. easy. Awesome. Well, what do you <laughs> fellas feel like doing? Oh, it's been a while since I've trained. Maybe there's an offer of gambling. I mean, gambling is my vote. Uh, gambling and maybe discussing a game plan for when we actually get there? Uh, well, we, drop I mean, in, sneak in, kill him, drop out. I mean, that sounds fine. Are we, are we cool with that? Or? Yep. Speed, speed will definitely be, our, uh, be to our advantage. I think we the... just don't get too bogged out in the details. I find that you know, takes away from the fun of it. The Monke are, if nothing else, unpredictable, fleeting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
But uh, I think I've got to go get myself a sword, so I might head off and do that, fellas, while you uh, sort a game out for us, eh? Uh, sounds like a plan. All righty. Cut so, two. Yeah, I will just throw us on theater of the mind for this one. Uh, so dealing with our lovely Corsair Prince first, um, you go to the Quartermaster, and uh, the Quartermaster uh, appears to be one of the, the more elder uh, Eldar on the ship. Um you know, kind of a little bit of gray in his hair. Uh, it is sort of a, a long ponytail that he keeps uh, that sort of just goes down almost to mid-back. Um, he does not introduce himself, strangely, but he does ask you what your poison is in terms of weapons. Ooh, well, I mean, I, I'd settle for a sword, but uh, what, what do you have, friend? Well, I mean, if you're here, you know probably full well that uh, the Farseer has been around uh, as long as hell longer than i have even and from her travels and her combat winning she has everything from your uh monkai power armor to uh shall we say orc choppas so it's really whatever you would prefer though i will say uh short of uh standard equipment everything comes with a price oh yes uh how much are we talking well, depends on how much you have to offer. Okay. So, say if I wanted, I don't know, Shock Whip, you could sort that out, yeah? Shock Whip? Sure. I mean, hell, I can give that to you free. Oh, sweet. Well, thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, I might have a bit of a think and then come back if I want anything else, eh? Certainly. And again... What should I call you? Oh, well, uh, you need not call me anything but Quartermaster, but... I have been known to go by a name, and that name is, as I frantically try and find it in my notes, <laughs> where the hell is it? <laughs> All right, give me a moment here. I'll just generate no, a new one. Fun. It's always, you know, always the first session. You think you have all the names in good place. There's his name. Uh, his name <laughs> is uh, Menorinson. 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 Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shorten that. His name is Mensan. All right. Manson, that's a lovely name. Uh, what craft world are you from, friendo? Honestly, I am not from any craft world. I have been a Corsair almost all of my life. I was uh, born should... on a vessel such as this, and probably will die on one. We should get along. We should get along swimmingly. Look, we're going to have a game in a bit if you're interested in oh? joining. I would oh, certainly yeah, be yeah, interested. Yeah. yeah, what's your... Uh, and, you know... I didn't want to tell anyone this, but we might be wagering some spirit stones. Keep it under your hat, though. Okay. And he, he sort of looks at you questioningly, and he says, It's a very powerful thing to wager. Uh, though I will not lie and say that such a thing would be very sought after on this ship. Of course, spirit stones are very much at a premium these days. Yes, yes, that's it. All the more fun, eh? But, you know, if it's too much, I understand if you... Hmm. <laughs> He, uh, he says, wait one moment, I'll be right back. And uh, he goes into what fares for the, uh, the back room, quote-unquote. And uh, when he returns, he is carrying uh, what looks to be a spear. And uh, the spear is instantly recognizable as a singing spear. And if you're not familiar, uh, a singing spear uh, are used to channel psychic might and are something that not only count as a force and a warp weapon, but if you throw it, it will return to your hand. Amazing. Wow, well, that is something. Wow, that's fantastic. Hey, uh, look, I'm going to be... Look, I, I feel like we've, we've, we've bonded. I would love you to come to the game, yeah? Yes, uh, let's just say that if I win, I get your stone that you're offering. If you win... You can have this. I mean, that, sound, that sounds fair enough. I'll have to see what everyone else is ponying up as well. But yeah, that sounds great. Mm. And can I do... Um, I'd like to basically do a persuasion to like... No, nah, actually, it's all right. Oh. Well, no, no, no. Finish the thought. I'm curious. Well, I was thinking of doing a persuasion to get him like really, really excited for the game. Mm -hmm. And actually, that, you know what? I'm going to try and bluff and say that I'm a really shitty player. Oh, so okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, knowing my luck, I don't think I'd be able to win something so good as that. Um, you know, 
I'm not. <laughs> Although I've been around a while, I'm sure I'm no match for a Corsair as the likes of you, despite being a prince and all. I'm not going to roll my deception. <laughs> no. Right. Oh. Uh, three successes. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, he and laughs and he says, uh, I think you'll find that uh, you may uh, be biting off a little more than you can chew, uh, young prince, but let's see what let's see where the dice fall, as it were. Sounds fantastic. I also got a complication there, so if you want to mm-hmm. work with that or I can... Oh, I already have in mind what the complication will be. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. Alright, um, well, with that, I'm going to just about face, take my cool whip and bounce on out the room all right so the rest of you uh at this point the rest of you have found uh your aforementioned quarters and again it is sort of set up in a sweet fashion and uh, you know sweet s-u-i-t-e not s-w-e-e-t uh but you know both kind of apply um again it's almost out of place this is set up almost like a monkai's rogue traders sort of stateroom um meaning that it's got a lot of uh human trappings a lot of human art um it's a lot of wide open spaces uh there's even a uh, a viewport out to uh well the webway that you see out there at the moment uh there is a reclaimer uh several in fact and there are also what fare for uh fresh fruits that are sitting in a bowl on one of the many tables and chairs uh that are in this space hmm yeah, this rate will have gone native by the time we get there. <laughs> uh. So yeah. Well, well, I will sit. I think uh, Glaive will <clears throat> probably pass the time by having, having a go to starting getting attuned to that imbued spirit stone. Okay, I would like you to roll me a Psychic Mastery Difficulty 4, please. I would like to do the Okay, yeah. Uh, let's deal with his, and then we'll deal with yours. That way it doesn't get lost. Or right, whoever so rolls first. Incenarians first. All right, so let's do Incenarians first. So, wow, that is, uh, that is eight. Wow. Okay. Wow. All right, so uh, Incenarian, uh, when you attune to your stone, and for... Uh, for bookkeeping's sake, uh, I'm going to be putting a handout underneath the Spirit Stones folder for each of you. Um, and of course, uh, I'm going to let it be set that all players can see it, but only you specifically can edit it. Um, so we'll start with a Senrian. Uh As you attune to your stone, uh, it is a purple stone in color. A name, a presence comes back and touches your mind. And it says, my name is Gilt... Gilt or... Ah, you know what? I'm going to pick a different name. i got to pick ones I can say. <laughs> I always love it. It's like, yeah, pregame. I've got good yeah. names. And then I actually try to say them, and nope. Gilt the fuck. Yeah. Uh, my name is Casus. I used to be a striking scorpion. Who might you be? I'm Incinerian. I was a striking scorpion as well. Ah, then we are of kindred spirit. Tell me, have you practiced the art of, uh, oh, I forget the name, but she says a technique that is very common in uh, scorpion training. I have. Excellent. Then uh, I will say that I would wish to observe your form, if that is all right with you. Very well. All right. And then, Bishop, as Glaive attunes to your stone, uh, your stone is, uh, we'll say, green in color. And uh, the presence comes back to you and says, My name is Logan. I used to be a healer. And though I have tread almost every path in Eldar can, I feel as if my time was cut short. Hmm. Ah, mystery then. <laughs> No, you're fine. I'm not sure. What, I'm not sure what that sentence still after is about, but I'm sure I'll find out. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, not so, uh, not so you're left out. Uh, would Seneca be doing the same? I'm actually going to start messing with the Wraithbone shard and practicing with it. Okay. I'll give that a psychic mastery though, because it is a psychic thing. Mm-hmm. So, not bad. 
yeah, that's uh, that's another ten. Yeah, so you know you're able to uh, create like li- whatever little structure or whatever little tool you feel like. Um, little soapstone carvings. Actually, hold up. Is that a? Uh, yeah, that is a. Uh, hold up. Let me let me make sure I'm seeing this correctly. So Glaives was a on his wrath die. That was a six. Mm-hmm. So that means you have one point of glory. And then, yeah, it was a regular icon for Seneca. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, you guys have one glory at the moment. Woo. Three. So, whichever one of you wants to keep track of it, you know, sort of self-regulate. Uh, but, yeah, uh, as all of you, uh, you know, get acclimated, uh, you know, sort of settle in, uh, you know, maybe after about 30 minutes, uh, your, uh, your Corsair friend and party member uh, walks in. And behind him, uh, I'm just going to say, are a grand total of two other individuals. One of them being the quartermaster, and the other a a gentleman uh, by the name of Golriel. My friends, did you? (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah, I found found a few people. Check out my cool whip, and then I want to do like some... Can I do uh, some showing off with it? You may certainly show off just because I find it funny and there's potential to fail here. Uh, if you could roll... Well, let me ask this. How fancy are you being? Oh, I want to be super, as fancy as I can possibly be. Sorry, I already pretty, rolled. But we can no, you're that. fine. I mean, uh, with eight successes, you get another point of glory, in fact. Um, yeah, you uh, you show off pretty damn well. I mean, this would be almost the equivalent of like Hesperax herself uh, showing up with a razor whip and just doing dances with it. What do you guys think? I'm pr- just proud of you that you didn't cut yourself. <laughs> it's a little early for me to be patching you up, after all. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I don't really live for that whole dark elder life stuff. Sorry. Hmm. I like hurting other people. Well, I mean, I don't like it. Realizing now, that's probably a really bad sign. Uh, I'm gonna raise my hand and just. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're going to play some uh, dice cards. Yeah. and uh, Let us play uh, dice cards. Yeah, play dice cards. All, All right, right, so um, what we're, we're going to do is we're going to sort of deal with this in a nebulous fashion. Uh, so there's two ways uh, you guys can roll. Well, I guess three ways. Um, cunning is a good skill to have here. Deception is another good skill to have. But for those of you who don't have cunning or deception or just don't have many points in it, um, we'll say that the, oh, excuse me, the other, um, skill that I will allow here, which might seem a little bit strange, but, you know, there's a reason for it. Uh, I will allow a survival to work here as well. I will work with what I got. All yeah. right. So, uh, the way it's going to work is you're just going to, uh, manually roll me a 2d6 and, uh, well, let me, let me, let me back up here. You're going to be rolling your skill as per normal, and we're going to compare that to everybody else's roll. And if you, um, say, if you tie with somebody else, that's when you'll roll the additional 2d6 to see who breaks the tie. Sounds good. All right. All right, so let me Um, uh, me put a line in chat so we don't lose it. I was was actually just going to try and um, get everyone a bit drunk before (laughs) to try and improve our odds, if that's... (laughs) I mean, that is uh, entirely up to how uh, everyone would uh, feel about getting drunk oh, before a mission. I was thinking more the NPCs, but yeah. Oh, the NPCs. Well. Yeah. Um, sure, roll me a persuasion. Uh, difficulty four here. Okay. Come on, fellas, you're going to have a drink, hey? Yeah? Oop. Oh, God! <laughs> <sighs> well, if you're offering that and they point at whatever bottle of liquor you have... Yeah, we yeah. prefer much stronger stuff. Oh, but I mean, by all means, go get some, please. I'd, I'd oh no, we're it. and and they crack their knuckles. We're here to clean you out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I uh, I need everyone to either roll a cunning, a deception, or a survival. Alrighty. I'm gonna roll deception. Oh my goodness! I can I I'm gonna use a wrath to reroll that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just a question. Yes, because Wrath only lets you re-roll the fails. Does this? If you uh, yeah, if you click that little blue re-roll button, it will handle it for you. 
Okay, cool. I will do I'm that. Pretty, I'm pretty content with my three. I'm not last. Cool. All right, so uh, it looks like the highest we have is a six here. All right, let me roll for uh, Mensan first. Uh, Mensan has nine dice, so let's see what he gets. Uh, one, two, three, four, six. Ooh, okay, six. Mensan gets Mensan. six. And then uh, Goriel. Let's see. Goriel is, uh, he doesn't exactly have the best dice in the world, but let's see what he gets. Uh, one, two, four successes. All right, so it is a tie, assuming I can read properly. Uh, it is a tie between Evan and uh, the Quartermaster. So if you could roll me 2d6. and Can, uh, can I spend glory? <laughs> I would say you can, but I might spend ruin to offset it. <laughs> yes, no, that sounds entirely fair. Um, I should mean, I spend glory, guys? I... It, it's a little early for glory. A little oh, non-threatening. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Alright. Now nah, we'll just roll the 2d6. Fine. Let's go. With the All nice right. roll. So just 2d6, yeah? Yep, just straight 2d6. No! Alright. Oh no! I hope he gets snake eyes. Nope, he no. gets the one success ah. he needs. And unfortunately, as yeah. much as you talked yourself up, he cleans you out, uh, Avon, or Evan. Uh, he does take Sorry. your spirit stone from you. So the empty one? The yeah. empty one, yeah. Like, if you started offering the full one around, like, people would start beating the shit out of you. Oh. <laughs> Ancestor juice. <laughs> Come on. I'll All right. sl Fuck. subtly slide Evan my D1. Uh -huh. Don't sell this. <laughs> Look, you I. Need it. You need it more than I do. How about this? I'm going to do you one better. <laughs> you need it more than I do. Clearly. Yeah. Clearly. Alrighty. No, I guess I lost. I kind of really want to one up him with the. The ancestor juice one even though he's gonna probably beat me up but oh it wouldn't be just him like i think most of the warlocks Everyone. in the room would just beat you on principle <laughs> right. oh yeah, oh, yeah. <clears throat> come on prince let's go re let, let's go regain your honor with a mission mm -hmm. fine i was gonna get a big spear for you guys cool. best intentions and all that all right big are you saying that the quartermaster has more than we might anticipate oh like if i wasn't clear and i apologize if i wasn't like the the quartermaster did show up with the singing spear in hand he was yeah. he gambled oh. it oh yeah that's okay. that's what i was trying to get you guys i was trying to be nice i may have to pay him a visit later <laughs> uh, all right let's get right. let's drink the booze make myself feel better about this all right uh, i'll uh i'll pass <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, we do have like three or four days before we need to get there, so. Mm -hmm. All right. No, that's that's fine. So, uh, unless there's anything anybody really wants to accomplish, we'll skip ahead a few days. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, when you arrive uh, back on the bridge, uh, you have been summoned there by the Farseer. Uh, she sort of points at the view screen and says, we will be exiting the webway momentarily. And, no, you can't sit in her lap. <laughs> <laughs> Um, after a moment, uh, there is, again, the transition to normal space. And before you uh, is the purple-red world of Yuvis. And even from here in, uh, you know, up here in space as it is, uh, you need not look long to spot this sort of momentous scar on the planet's surface. Uh, it is several hundred kilometers in length, uh, and this blackened wound trails across the northern continent until it reaches what remains of the black ship. And, you know, even without prompting, uh, whoever is manning the view screen sort of zooms and enhances until you have almost an aerial view of this black ship. Uh, you see that about half of the Monkai ship has been left intact, and the rest of the ship has been scattered ac across the plains and the forest surrounding the trench that it dug when it hit the planet. Um, the other thing that you would notice is that there appear to be signs of a settlement uh, in the shadow of what remains of the ship. It's not a very large settlement, like maybe supports about 100 people, if that, but there is a settlement all the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. the Farseer points at this and says, well, that's your target, or, well, your target's in there somewhere. 
Uh, again, I was told to let you uh, operate at your own discretion. Where would you like us to drop you off? Oh, wait a minute. So the target is in the settlement or in the wreckage? Uh, you don't know. Mm-hmm. He could be in I'm, a- I'm, ask- I'm asking her. Oh, you're asking her. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Your target could be... Hell couldn't even be at this place. They could be halfway across the planet. Who knows? Can we, can we ask you who's kind of the surface? Uh, maybe if we sort of sat down on the opposite side from the ship from the settlement and then we can sort of head into the remains of the ship, see if we can lift any information from the remains and then sneak it into the settlement from there. Before that, can we get a scan of the surface? Of course. And Maybe. she uh, she motions at one of the crewmen on the bridge and after a moment, uh, a sensor reading appears on the view screen. Uh, what you see is there's approximately... Uh, what's that number? There are approximately 500 individuals uh, that are both within the wreckage and in the settlement. Uh, there are no uh, other large life signs, meaning like no humanoid life signs, um, that are present anywhere else on the planet. Uh, however, uh, in sort of a big glowing red rune... Um, there are indications that there are disturbances in the warp uh, throughout both the settlement and the wreckage of the ship. Sounds like we have our work cut out for us. Oh, great. Indeed. <laughs> really wish I had my spirit stone, but whatever. <laughs> and whose fault is that? Look, I, ha- I, I had a reach around straight. It was perfect. There's no way you could have beaten that. <laughs> <laughs> and and the farseer laughs and says, "Wait, did you actually try and beat uh, the quartermaster at uh, dice cards? That's what we're calling Look, it now. It's now dice cards." I'm Look, I really, I, I, I'm here for this. You should Look, know I'm, that I'm not that saying man... he's a cheater. I'm just saying he wasn't entirely honest, and I don't think that's in the sport of dice cards. Oh no, that's no, completely no. within the spirit of dice cards. Clearly, you have never well, played dice cards before. Uh, that's fine. I'll just have to get them back. That's fine. Our quarry patron is not one for living in squalor. I'd imagine the <laughs> settlement's the better choice. I agree. And if uh, whoever remains is corrupted, then we can take care of them as well. All right. Mm-hmm. So let me uh, let me show you this map so that we're on the same page. So where you guys want to land is, uh, so we'll say that uh, sort of this bottom of the image is where the settlement is. So you want to land, if I understand correctly, you want to land on the opposite side of that. So like uh, over here, right? Not, yeah, not there. anymore, do we? No, I'd rather go. I, yeah, like, I, I, would, I, would, like, I would say... If the, if the ship itself is inhabited, that changes things. Yeah, mm-hmm. several, several clicks away from the settlement, but not in between the, like not with the ship in between. Gotcha. So, so I, far, I don't know. So, several, be... several kilometers away from the settlement and uh, with a straight line to go from uh, the landing point to the settlement. Okay. Does anyone mm-hmm. have divination? Ooh, that is a good question. Does anyone Do have divination? So, have what? Divination. Uh, I mean, I've got submissions, so it's close enough. Mm, you know, nope. No map, divination here. It's like it's coming from. I think I might ask um, ask our captain and be like, uh, webway portals within the area, can you uh, throw up a quick scan for me? Basically, because I have the keystone, so right. I want to know if there's going to be like a way for us to escape, like mm-hmm. an exit or sure. entry, even. Give me one moment, because I need to rename something on her sheet. No worries. All right, she says, I'll do you one better. And uh, she performs her uh, her own psychic mastery test. Sick. Boop. Oh, no. That's a perils. <laughs> Ooh, that is a perils. Well, the good oh, news God. is she's not... Uh, oh, no, she is manifesting a power. Oh, dear. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I guess this is a, uh, a good opportunity to say that uh, you guys, if you look under the macros... Uh, you should see three macros, and if you don't, let me know, because I might not have enabled them for you. Uh, you should see Combat Complication, you should see Critical yeah. Hit, and you should see Perils of the Warp. 
Uh, basically, what those do is they roll on the uh, relevant table. Um, so uh, this is actually a good way to test out if the macro works properly. Let's, uh, let's see what she rolls. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. So, uh, <laughs> no. so narratively what happens is uh, she attempts to reach out and, uh, you know, sort of divine if there's any way she can help you. And as she does, uh, everyone on the bridge uh, is going to suffer uh, a total of two shock as there's almost a, a rippling wave of psychic potential and psychic agony that, that sort of ripples out from her. And you can see that her face visibly strains. And she stops the power after only a few seconds of this and says, Oh, okay, that was not the, the wisest thing to do. The, the situation is far worse than I, I could have thought. Um, well, I guess the good news is I can confirm that uh, your, your target is within the ship itself. Uh, however, uh, the settlement is... It's overrun. Uh, I, I'm on. I, I hesitate to say this, but I believe minions of she who thirsts are manifested within the settlement. Okay, that's a pretty strong no for the settlement. Then, um, like also, the are you doing all right? <laughs> I I will be fine. I simply did not expect things to be this bad. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe this, we fellas. do what try do going think? into the Hulk then. <laughs> it is. I forget, does shock get soaked? I was say, I don't think you can soak shock. You can't soak shock. Well, right. before we descend, I can take a minute to do some Medicaid and patch some shock up before we go. I mean, yeah, this is a, this is a good chance to uh, get on the same page of, uh, you know, how you uh, regroup, how you that. respite, things like that. Yeah. Um, so it's actually working out very well in the narrative sense. Uh, so the way it works, uh, the way a regroup works is it takes about an hour. And this lets you recover all shock. All shock. And uh, if you had any wounds, uh, you could do Medicaid checks to do your wounds. But since it's just shock, you take an hour and you're fine. Okay. So I'm going to pretend like that didn't happen then because I forgot about regrouping. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll just pretend that none of those Medicaid tests happen. You don't need to worry about that complication. Well, yeah, um, that, that might be for the best. Mm hmm. But yeah, uh, so after after your hour of rest, uh, the Farseer does uh, lead you to a Vampire Raider. And uh, for those who are not familiar with the Vampire Raider, uh, there is a this, this vessel. It's a sleek, heavily armed transport that is usually used in stealthy assaults. Uh, it is equipped with very powerful hollow fields that make getting down to the surface from orbit uh, in an undetected fashion very trivial. In fact, it makes it also very hard to spot from a visual perspective. Um, so, unless anyone wants to do anything on the way down, um, we'll say that the journey down is fairly uneventful. Uh, your pilot is very, rather skillful and is able to deposit you on the far side uh, towards the top of the map. Uh, deposit you on the far side uh, without any of the Monkai being uh, better of the wear. Um, and the pilot says, I will be approximately a few kilometers away, uh, just so that any wandering Monkai do not stumble upon me by accident. Uh, if you need a evac, just signal me uh, via the following. And he gives you the equivalent of whatever Eldar use for Vox speeds, because I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. Mm. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to turn to, I think... Glaive, and I'm gonna be like, so are you getting any uh, any witching uh, warp stuff going on down there? I'm basically gonna be asking him if he's doing his synescience or whatever. Well, let's give it a go. So he's gonna sort of tentatively use synescience to sort of feel out if there's any psychic presences in the ship itself. Go for it. Oh, um, depending on yep. how far synescience goes, I uh, forget what the range is. It's 100 um, meter. Alright, so it, it, enough to tell if there's anyone in, in, immediately inside the ship where we're trying to come in. You can shift it, though, right? For longer range, or is it... I think you can shift it. You know, this is, yeah, again... 50 uh, meters per uh, extra... Ah, uh, yes, you can increase the range by 50 meters for each oh, extra okay. Probably not going to do much, then. <laughs> Unless we're flying real low. 
Let's start. Okay. Well, we're fine. basically just going to be like sounding it out as we go, but mm -hmm. knowing that there isn't a Psyker immediately on the other side of the blast door is good news. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, go ahead and roll. Let's uh, let's see what you get. Mm, difficulty two. Let's see. Where are we? No, that's a damage roll. Wow, very nice. Uh, yeah. So uh, you could shift those uh, those two uh, sixes for a total of another 100 meters. Yep, let's see if there's anything within 200 meters. Okay. So I'm going to say this out of character because it's uh, there's an in-character reason for it. But out of character, here's what you learn first. Um, for every hour you're going to spend in the ship's wreckage or really anywhere within the immediate area you would sense that the corrupting forces of she who thirsts and other beings of the warp would make it a very, you know, corrupting effect, which means that every hour you spend, you must make a corruption test. Oh. Um, the other That's thing scary. that you notice uh, a bit too late, and I'm going to have you roll this in a second, is that anytime you use a psychic power, you add okay. an automatic wrath die. So I do need so you to roll me a 1d6, please. Oh, no. All right. you you're fine. Right. You're, you're fine. fine. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, there is a third part to this, but uh, that's for me to know and for you to find out. Uh, okay. So again, narratively, what you sense is, again, pretty much the same thing that the Farseer said, that this place has been tainted and could do with a good bit of exterminatus. Um you are detecting that the most powerful pull, as it were, is coming from within the wreckage of the ship. Yep, so Glaze going to go, ooh. Okay, so uh, first of all, we do not want to stay here any longer than we have to. This place reeks of chaos. Uh, second, strongest psychic source does seem to be in the ship. Uh, so, yeah. Does anyone know here know how to access Monkai computers? I do. You're probably sort the person of. we need to. Let's see if we can, like, pull up an image of this, uh... What was the guy's name again? Uh, uh his name Lauren... Is Lauren Lexus. Lipsum? Uh, well, you're close. It is an L. Uh, Lexus. his name... Lexus, Lexus. Lexus Lopata. Yep. Do you at least have an uh, idea of which direction compared to us? Uh, about, and sort of points in a direction? Yeah. And yeah. And is the direction I'm pointing anywhere near the bridge? Uh no. Uh in fact, uh let me see, because again, I'm I'm trying to remember, you know, what skills I can have people roll. Uh Sorry, let's see. see. Oh, yeah. Uh let's see. I would say anyone who would like to roll an investigation. Oh no, no, no. There is uh there is scholar. Okay. Uh if anyone would like to roll a scholar test. Um, I'm going to make the difficulty here... Let's make it a three. Well, I, I, uh, I, I use my tech test to try and bring up a picture of the game that fails <laughs> miserably, okay. I'm assuming. Yeah, I was going to say, even with your tech test, uh, it's a uh, it's a three. Ooh, oh. you get another point of glory. Very nice. Oh, and that passes the scholar test. Mm -hmm. All right, so, uh, Mr. Prince... I'm calling you Prince because I feel like I never pronounced Please Avon do. right. So that's fine. Um, so Avon, what you learn, or at least you recall anyway, is that uh, you know you're not 100 percent familiar with how the Monkai build their ships, but you're pretty sure that the black ships in particular are specifically designed to be sort of psychic containing, and the fact that things are leaking out of the black hole is a bad sign and the fact that your target might be the very powerful source in the middle of said holds even worse oh uh so slight problem here uh we might be being a bit deceived by the nature of this vessel so it turns out uh monkai have these ships basically designed to lock up witches and psychers and stuff um that reading that you're probably getting on the psyker is probably far greater than it actually appears Oh, novel. 
Yeah, it's a... Well, all the more reason to do this quickly before they realize we're here. To that effect, how are we going to be quick? Well, well we don't start really... Start by getting a floor plan. Mm -hmm. we, no, we don't really need to. Uh, we, don't, we don't have a need to go through the ship. If you can pinpoint the area where the psycho is, that can make a center right there. I mean, that will be a little, little risky. I mean, this place is uh, eh, not exactly psycho friendly shall we say. Well, there are three of us, so unfortunately we will have to use our powers. I am mm. afraid I don't know how their technology works terribly well, so... Going yeah, I, I, we have. Kind of hard <laughs> to, to work. I mean, it, it's. I mean, who designs a system that needs at least five different people to push one button? I know, right? Ugh. Primitives. Foolish monk. Uh, I guess you quickness. work with what you have, and what they have is numbers. Indeed. Right. All right. But I think. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, you. I was don't. just going to be like. I think that sounds like a good plan. We pinpoint where they're coming from, and then we just make a quick insertion. I think that sounds. Probably like the best thing to do, but I do. I think out of that character, I'm going to be asking like, do any of you guys have like quicken or delay or anything like that? No. No, I'm, I'm thinking we'll like find a route through the vents or something to okay. get as close to where they are as possible, and then just barrel yeah. through. Well, I had another idea. We walk outside the ship on the side where the settlement is not find the area where that cyber is, and I will pierce, pierce the hole of the ship. With... My charm. <laughs> <laughs> my cunning wit. <laughs> well, he's got my vote. Yeah, I mean, we do, we do have a vague sense of where the thing is, so we can probably land within, a f like, a few dozen meters. Mm-hmm. Any plans better than no plan? So no one has quicken or delay. Uh, yep. I, hold on. I do actually have quicken delay. So oh, okay, because that is going to be amazingly useful. That will help us not be here, like yes. getting corrupted. Planning on that, but All right. let's uh, get into the ship first, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, fair enough. So you know, uh, you know the uh, the pilot lets you uh, you know sort of feel your way. Uh, he sets you down uh, where you ask him to, and then he speeds off. So again, that the uh, the humans do not notice him, and you start either going through nearby access ways or literally burning. Well, let me ask this: Are you just going to go through the nearest airlock, or are you literally going to start burning your way through the hull? I I think I'd rather go through the access ways. Okay. Yeah. In that case, I will put us on this map, which, uh, you know, you should be seeing mostly darkness at the moment. But if you look down uh, lower left, oh, I have to ping as GM one second. Uh, if you look down lower left, uh, you should see uh, your four tokens as you emerge into the dark, cramped, uh, otherwise uh, ominous looking uh, passageways. Now... Uh, of course, as I've said, the interior is both uh, dank and dark, uh, cold and unfeeling. Uh, it is a place of shadows and screaming, and in fact, you do hear uh, the distant sounds of human screaming. Uh, it is also disorienting and terrible. Uh, compared to the graceful living architecture of a craft world, this place would be miserable even if there weren't humans, and Kane knows what else. Uh, you can feel uh, all of your spirit stones pulsing and warning against the gaze of she who thirsts. So you best complete your mission rather quickly. Mm hmm. Okay. Speaking of, uh, let's uh, go forward. I yeah. was just going to say, noticing that, I'm going to be. I think I'm going to turn to which one of you is like the most senior, like responsible. Probably like... a Senrian. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, a Senrian fella. Yes. Uh, please hold on to this for me. I'm going to whip over the the one that has the ancestor juice, mainly because I'm worried about me getting murdered and that being eaten. 
there's a, a glare behind the face mask that you can't see, but it, it'll take it. Okay. You still have that black one I gave you? Um. Maybe. Hold on to it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. All right. So. Of right, course. Uh, the way this will work uh, is every 10 meters you move, so every about, yeah, that's so about every 10 squares that you move, uh, I do need you to make a stealth check. Now, um, of course, uh, you're basically rolling a contested uh, against something's awareness, but uh, yeah, just... Uh, and then just take, should our tokens be two squares wide? Uh, yes, they should. Cool. Uh, I got us a glory. Very nice. Awesome. Gotta start spending that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start pulling before too long. Uh, so what can you do with glory? Uh, well, you can uh, do many things. things. Uh, let me pull up the page so I can list off can... all the lovely things. Uh, yeah, you can add to dice. Yeah. Okay, so uh, glory. Uh, you can use it to uh, basically add a benefit to any given scene. Uh, there is no, uh, well, there are examples of how to spend glory, but in general, it's say, hey, I want to spend a point of glory to do X within the scene, and then we sort of workshop how that could work. Um, but some examples, uh, some examples of how to spend it include you could increase the dice pool, uh, you could increase the damage of an attack, you could make a, a critical hit even more severe, uh, you can also use a point of glory to seize the initiative during combat, which means that you can basically go back to back. Okay. That wouldn't be a bad use of that. Alrighty. So, spending uh, glory for that? No, you're not in combat yet. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Um, but... Uh, anyway, uh, I still need to roll a stealth. Yeah, you do need to roll stealth. And, uh... Might not be a bad yeah. idea to spend a glory to see if we can find a terminal that we can access somewhere nearby for a map or something. I, yeah, see, I think I I've got a high enough stealth that, to just... But... We'll see if DM's willing to play with that. Uh, yeah, yeah I would cool. say that it, uh, if you spend a glory, I will say that uh, before you go into this sort of narrowing of the corridor... Uh, there will be a working, if flickering, terminal that you could access uh, over here to the right. Cool. Okay. I'm okay. Spend the glory for that. You guys are. Cool. Yep. Bishop glory is, is also a party, a party resource as opposed to yep. a yeah individual like wrath. Mm -hmm. Anyone know how to work that? Yeah, bishop. Uh, bishop. Oh, you mean the? Never mind. I thought you were meeting the yeah. glory. Nah. Just me or? I know. I it's just it's uh, it's can uh, anyone help me with this in any way? I can roll to support him. Assist. Yeah. yeah. It's also a good way to remember how assisting works. Okay. So uh, I'll assist him with it. Let's see. Give me those bonus dice. There's my assist. Which, uh, if I successes. remember correctly, it gives him extra dice equal to the successes. So that would be yeah. three extra? Yes. Cool. So you'll make okay, your tackle. That's actually, plus that is actually really dice. useful. Yeah. Good work. I have a modest knowledge of technology, I suppose. All right, here we go. Ooh, you really uh, like those ones on the on the on the wrapped eye, don't you? I I love them. You do you get three extra dice on top of this too? Yeah, so roll an additional three d six, and let's see oh, what your I total did. number or at is. Least I thought I did. So that's ten die there, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's ten. Okay, oh, that is the that is the extra three. I've added it in the bonus. Thing. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so here's what you're able to get off uh, of the uh, the terminal before something happens. Uh, you are able to determine that this vessel uh, is indeed one of the black ships, and it is... Where is it in my notes? Do, 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 do. Uh, you will find that uh, the ship's name is the Avengers Folly, and the reason why uh, it crashed on the planet is because the Gellerfields failed mid-warp meaning uh, that they had to sort of leave it in an emergency fashion 
And, you know, with all things related to the warp, it's very unpredictable. Uh, it spat them out literally halfway into the Uvis atmosphere with no chance of recovery. Um, um, Especially not with a few dozen demons clinging to the hold. Correct. <laughs> Probably not. Um, the other thing that you'll get before, again, something happens is that there are warnings and blaring alarms that the black holes have been breached. Oh. Okay. Um, well, sort of stuff we already knew. This big dumb spaceship crashed because it's piloted by a stupid monkai. Uh, and also the ship specifically designed for keeping witches and demons and stuff inside it uh, isn't doing that at all. So, uh, likely... Oh. That Potentially like something big coming out of it right now. Yeah, and in fact, I'd like everyone to roll me a DN4 <laughs> awareness test, please. Uh, what's it? A DN4 awareness. I passed, but complications. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Huzzah. Okay, yes. alright, so it Hello. looks Hello. like the only person... No, uh, two people passed. Uh, Avon and Seneca passed. Okay. So you two are going to be able to act on round one. However, the rest of you are going to be caught unaware as a blur of blood red and bone white leaps from within the nearest wall. Oh, and God. it gives you barely any time to react. Uh, you, of course, uh, even if you're caught unaware, uh, you are able to just barely dodge out of the way in time. And as you turn to see your attacker, you see what is unmistakably a warp beast. Uh, you are able to identify them as the Chimerae, and as you recall, they are sometimes bred and used by your dark kin, the Drukhari. Uh, fun fact about these beasts, they are capable of leaping in and out of real space at will. Oh, and if that wasn't bad enough, you remember that they tend to hunt in packs. Which, you know, becomes rather evident very quickly as several many-eyed skulls with drooling tongues begin to emerge from the walls. Oh. And that is where we're going to start our very first combat as four of these beasts emerge onto the field. All right. Oh. So let me add everybody to the turn order. All right. So uh, again, yeah. it does start with the players because I'm being nice. And the only two that can act this round are going to be Avon or Evan and Seneca. So either one of you, whichever one would you like to go first? Um, Seneca, please take I'm a, a better I'm position in. here. Yeah. <laughs> I say so. for sake of argument, you can move past one another. Um, you're okay. certainly Eldar and graceful enough to do so. Uh, yeah. It's only when you're like cornered in by enemies that you can't do that. I think it might not be a bad idea, though, to spend a glory to go ahead and have both of us go before any of them. See if we can't focus one side down and just face down one side. Mm. Sounds good. Okay. So which one of you is acting first? Uh, I will. Okay. And what you doing? Um, I'm going to step back into this position here. Okay. And I'm going to... Let me take a look real quick. Uh, shoot. Combat. I'm going to... Since we're in a black ship, smiting is not the best idea... <laughs> just go ahead and pop out a shark and pistol shot alright so uh, their defense happens to be a 5 alright I'm going to spend a wrath to reroll uh, those 3 failures alright so again uh, yeah so you got it with the 5 you are managed uh, able to hit them uh, so at this point you would roll damage and I subtract it from resilience and we'll, we'll, we'll see what you roll for damage first and we'll go into it Okay. 12 damage overall. So 12 damage overall, uh, reduced by their resilience, means that they take a grand total of this many wounds. So, uh, as you pull out your shuriken pistol and fire it into the Chimera, uh, it catches the beast uh, by surprise almost, and it leaves just these streaks of, well, you know, the beast is already red, but now like an even deeper crimson just streaks across its back. And if you had to guess, you've probably heavily wounded this beast. All right. That's a good start. All right. 
So, uh, normally I would let you spend the glory to uh, keep the initiative, but I'm going to, you know, spend a point of ruin so that I can go first. Uh, Fair enough. Uh, so, uh, one of the Chimera from behind you guys, uh, oh dear, it is seeking it across all tokens. I'll just have to remember that. Um, as, uh, as, uh, which one do I want to have move? Let's have, let's have this one down here. So, uh, this Chimera here is going to leap at Asenrian. Uh, Asenrian, what is your defense? My defense is five. Your defense is five. All right, let's see what he rolls for his weapon skill. He rolls a seven, so that will be hitting you. All right, and let's see uh, what he gets for his damage. Well, uh, I have bad news, unfortunately. That is a total of 12 damage uh, with a minus two AP. So how much of that do you have after resilience? Uh, my resilient is nine, so uh, minus two because of DAP. Uh, yes. So if you have armor, two of that armor. Oh goes yeah. Away. So I have nine resilience and I had four armor, so that would be uh, minus two armor. So that's eleven total with my resilience and whatever's left of my armor. Okay. You've got rune armor on. Although if you do have rune armor, armor that's yeah. I have rune armor. Yeah. yeah. Then you're so you can ignore the AP. Oh, then that's a thirteen total. Then you don't care. It literally just swipes you with your claws and you laugh at it. It is laughable. Like, you can't hurt me. Alright. And now it is your guys' turn. Okay. Ooh. Um. Do I know at all what these defense is going to be for these guys? Or um, I'm, I'm... You know, for this first combat, because we're getting into the swings of things, I'll just say, you know, for sake of transparency, their defense is a five. Sorry, you cut out. You cut oh, out. sorry. Uh, their defense is a five in sake of transparency. Okay, so... No so I tied it with um, my shot of a five there earlier. Yeah. So, hmm, what do you guys think? I could try and risk a multi with, like, 11 and try and get uh, two. I'd go for one that's unwounded so far. There's yeah. four, then four of us. Alrighty. I think I'll get. I will. In fact, I'll keep my distance because I got like this whip now, mm -hmm. and I think I'll just whip this one. That's. Can I whip this one that's in the wall here? Um, I, I would say yes, but it might have some uh, some cover. Okay. I in that case, I'll probably go for this one here. Okay. Sure. Cool. Whip. So that's uh, seven there. <laughs> And a complication. <laughs> so, a good time to test out the macro. Yeah. The good news as well is that with five, they can, uh, you're out of ammo on your whip. So My, my whip is out of ammo. <laughs> I, I think I have the perfect way to deal with that. Uh, but go ahead and roll damage, yeah. and we'll flavor it appropriately. Uh, so it's five, so I get to shift, so that's going to be two ED. I'm just going to roll, uh, I'm just going to roll two D6. That's 1d6. Okay, so that's... Uh, so my damage is currently 9. Oh, I should have shifted for AP, but that's fine. Uh, so that's 11 damage. Okay, so with 11 damage, uh, you do something very similar to uh, what Seneca did, and you leave this thing uh, heavily wounded. However, as you, you know, hit this thing with the shock whip and, you know, it flays the skin of the beast, uh, the beast sort of lashes out with its maw, grabs the whip in its teeth and rips okay. it out of your hand oh <laughs> oh <laughs> oh no oh no mm -hmm. so unfortunately yeah i was gonna say so unfortunately you're now whipless uh so how you want to deal with that is up to you uh but at this point uh unless you guys would like to spend glory to activate the other two characters that were caught unaware uh the remaining three ki uh, chimera are going to move so I would like to spend uh, glory to activate the other two characters. I okay. support that. <laughs> I'm against it. <laughs> it's two to one. We, we like like uh, it got proved when uh, Isenian got hit. They can hurt us. Yeah, let's I'm, not waste glory on it. I'm gonna change. Good, actually, yeah, that's a good point. Don't do a negative. All right, let's let them wail off. Okay. 
So, uh, this Kamurai down here, gonna go for Seneca. Seneca, what is your defense? Uh, my defense is a two. A two, you say? <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Well, that means I can shift <laughs> one damage, or one of those uh, sixes for additional damage. That's fine. Uh, so I'll roll that separately, but let's see what he rolls for damage first. It wouldn't matter. He, he yeah, would be only doing he, 11 damage, which you don't care about. Nope. All right. So, uh, for giggles, uh, this Chimerai that uh, Avon, or even uh, just whipped, yeah. is comically going to try and do the exact same thing to him. No. So, <laughs> ah. uh, what is your defense? Uh, my defense is seven, actually. Then uh, you are able to skillfully dodge out of the way uh, as the whip is flung back at you. Now, it doesn't go back into your hands, but, you know, it's, yeah, like, no, no, somewhere no. over here now. Um, how easy are these things to tame? <laughs> I mean, somehow the Drukari do it. I, I don't know that, do I? I guess not. Uh, uh, spend enough time in Korra. I, I, would yeah. spend, I would spend a wrath if I could to be like I do know it, but... I mean, do you have wrath to spend? No, no, I don't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I was gonna say that's it's the perils of uh, spending it early. I'll tell like you what: one, if you spend a glory, oh, <laughs> well, maybe I don't want to hurt the guys. <laughs> like, no. I'm, I'm I, I mean, I really want to, but I don't think that's gonna fly. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, in that case, the remaining uh, Kamurai is gonna go up to oh. uh, Seneca. Because, you know, piercing uh, uh, pincer maneuver. Uh, Seneca, you still have a uh, a, uh, oh, a two, so that means yes. I can shift two. Yes. Is that a crit? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a crit, unfortunately. But uh, let's roll damage first, and then we'll deal with the crit. I'm okay with that. Uh, okay, so I now it's... need to roll the additional damage, but I don't think it's going to matter unless I roll two sixes. I didn't roll two sixes, yeah, so you don't care. Right there. Yep. Uh, but the critical hit still does go through, so let's see what the yes. critical hit is. Oh, boy. A merciless strike, a blow to the foe's body, steals the breath from their lungs, pulverizing innards in a nasty crunch. Effect, target suffers one mortal wound. Ooh. Where is where are wounds on this sheet? You know. uh, on your tokens, they should be the red bar, and it will yeah. sync automatically to your sheet. Got it. Uh, we're wearing rune armor, so you can soak uh, mortal wounds. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll see if I can soak. All right. So, here is my toughness test. Uh, yeah, I soak the hell out of that. Yeah, uh, and in fact, I believe I forget. Can you get glory from soak tests? I don't think so, no. 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 Okay, so unfortunately you don't get a point of glory, but you are able to soak that mortal wound, which means you lose one shock. Yep. So I just, my guts get jellied, and then my runes fix it. Mm-hmm. And uh, shock, if you haven't figured it already, is the blue bar. Yep. Yeah. Got that done. All right. So uh, that is everybody in the first round. So uh, we're going to come back around to the players. Anyone can act now. All right, I may as well start off. Mm -hmm. Do it. Uh, uh, yeah, hmm. Uh, yeah, I probably don't want to waste Protect Jinx on these things, because they're probably quite squishy. Yeah, I think we want to restrict our psychic powers in general until it's a big show. Yeah. Slap them. All right, then let's just... stab the nearest one with a Witchblade. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Again, their defense is uh, going to be a five. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, po point of order, is their resilience 15 or greater? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, cool. So, only doing nine base damage then. Alright, mm, so you do have three the at the moment. Mm. Would you like to re-roll using Wrath, or are you just going to stick with the fact you've missed? Yeah, I've got two Wrath. I think I'll spend a Wrath to re-roll that. Alright, click the blue button and it'll handle it for you. Total of seven. And I believe you can shift one of those sixes for extra damage. I think I will do that for bonus damage. 
and that's a. I don't know. Is that a crit? Uh, no. Uh, it's the Aquila with the gear around it is the six. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, now then. Now let me put some bonus. Uh, let me put that bonus damage dice on. All right. So, as I uh, deal with getting rid of his token, how do you want to fillet this thing? <laughs> uh, basic, basically, take whips the witch, uh, the witch blade off his back, stabs it down the throat, and just keeps stabbing it down the length of the creature. So you bifurcate the creature in a very gruesome fashion, and... Uh, because it is a warp beast, uh, its corpse does linger for a time, but even now, even already, it is beginning to fade away into nothingness. Melting into a puddle of ooze. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, uh, unless you want to uh, spend for uh, glory to keep the initiative, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to spend a point of ruin to make a change of my own. And that change is that from the darkness to the north of this map, some form of psychic power comes rocketing at you guys. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So oh let me open up that there sheet and roll for that. Do, 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 do. Yep, there it is. All right. So uh, this is going to be uh, against you, Evan, because you are the closest. Oh. Uh. Unfortunately, you are the closest. Uh, so no, let's no, see no. what they roll first. Oh, okay, no. so they only needed a DN of four, which means they can shift uh, that, uh, that six that they rolled. And that means that you are going to be taking uh, 1d3 plus one shock. So let me roll that first. Yep. So you are taking four shock. And you must make a successful willpower test, DN3, or you are also staggered. Huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, four shock down and willpower. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Oh. Uh, so you are now, uh, now also staggered. Uh, there should be a handout that says combat okay, effects. Combat effects. Mm. Half speed, uh, is half speed, it? basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So as this unbound psyker uh, unleashes uh, a just a, I don't want to call it a wave, but almost like a pillar slamming into you, uh, you just feel yeah. pain that you have not felt almost maybe in your entire life. And to make things worse, I also get to roll on the perils of the warp table. No. Oh. oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, oh oh dear. Uh, okay, let me check ranges here. Oh, oh dear. No. I need everyone... DN5 fear test. I need everyone to make me a DN5 fear test. So, full transparency, that's a DN7 for me. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> it, it's a good thing you brought it up. So, he's at a DN7 because he, as a Corsair, has a plus one. And by default, all Eldar characters have a plus one on top of that. Two result tests. So okay. all of you need to be making a DN6 here, whereas uh, Evan needs to roll a DN7. Oh, boy. Uh, let's go. <laughs> oh, no. Ooh, I see a complication Ooh, from Seneca, so I'm just yeah. going to take that ruin. And, There's uh, uh, a couple complications. Okay, I'm just going to take that ruin. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> And what I'm going to say is that, uh, not that it matters for them, but all the Chimera fail theirs as well. So, yeah. you know, if you get into a running match, they're also at half speed, but yeah. So, you know, again, narratively, what happens is, as soon as uh, Evan begins to uh, sort of grit his teeth and, and sort of grunt in pain, uh, there are these sort of guttural voices that come next to all of your ears, and the words are gibberish, but... It sort of shakes you to your core. And I believe that means all of you are unfortunately um, staggered. St staggered. And yep. um, because you uh, are feared, you have a plus one DN involving any attacks or any tests that involve the attacker. Which means Ooh, when boy. you find the Psyker, 
that uh, is somewhere to the north, all of your tests against him or involving him are at a plus one DN. Yeah. Okay. But uh, that's it for my reign of terror. Uh, it is now your guys' turn again. <laughs> I am <laughs> going time. to go ahead and take take up here. I'm going to spend my campaign card from earlier, and they shall know no fear. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be, I need to make a brief inspiring statement. Well, our kind's been through so much worse. Let's get another <laughs> servant of her. Uh, to give all of us plus two dice to resolve test till the end of the scene, plus one glory point to our party as well. Very nice. Yay. Huzzah. There we go. That should mitigate things a little bit in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to shoot this chimera right in front of me. Go for it. Uh, this is also a good time to check because I'm not 100% on all the modifiers, but I believe as a pistol uh, and as point blank, I believe you get bonuses, yes? I'm I think it's sure. just that you can shoot yeah. it in... It's, in my yeah, it's that I don't take yeah. anything. It means you can use I it in my Gotcha. You use your weapon skill instead of your ballistic, I believe. Yeah, which no? is better for me, so... Yeah, that's why I ask. Yep. And again, they're... So, uh, this goes uh, full gun carter on these warp beasts. Five is just <laughs> enough to do Five it. is just enough, yep. So go ahead and roll me some damage. I'm, I'm not the fighter of this party. I just needed to get that resolve out there. Uh, I don't... I rolled the wrong thing. Yeah, it's the red die uh, icon right, that does 11. damage. There we go. 11. Okay. Uh, so uh, you don't wound it as well as uh, certain people, but, you know, you still manage to put a dent in it, as it were. That's a start. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So, uh, Seneca's turn is... Well, let me ask this. Would you be moving at all? Because you, you do have move that you could... I am kind of in a rock and a hard place here. Fair. And I don't feel like provoking the one that I just shot. Mm -hmm. yet. <laughs> Any further anyway. So no, I'm going to I'm going to stick in a position where I have friends also flanking it. Okay. Uh then what I'm going to have uh the camera to uh, Evans North is I'm going to have it roll a uh, a willpower here. And it failed. So what happens is the Chimerai, uh, even though it is staggered, uh, leaps out into the darkness. And let me roll uh, its weapon skill. And you hear somebody cursing, but otherwise you don't like hear like limbs being flayed or uh, you know blood splattering to the floor. Uh, probably the Chimerai just completely failed its attack. Uh, okay. But yeah, uh, it comes back around to you guys as players. I'd like to take it. Sure, what you'd like to do. Uh, all right, so quick question. Mm -hmm. If I uh, if I move away from the Chimera, uh, is it going to attack me? Um, I believe it's around. a good it's a good opportunity for me to refresh myself how to you know how opportunity attacks work. I think it just means that they can do it. Yeah. As yeah, long, unless he so uses an action to do it. Yeah, you can spend an action and then. That stops it giving an opportunity attack, basically. Yeah, no, I don't so want to could, use my action. But you could multi action, so you could move away and then shoot, and still shoot and move, if that makes sense. And yeah, I, I, I want to move in the corridor, so I, I'll move away from that camera and let it attack me. Okay. So uh, let me uh, go ahead and roll for that. Uh, what is. Oh, complication. Interesting. Uh, what uh, What is your defense? Like five. Then uh, it will hit you. And let's see what it rolls for damage. Yeah, you don't care. Yep. All right, so I'm starting to freeze. My uh, movement is reduced to half. Mm -hmm. So we have speed eight as Eldari. Uh, mm -hmm. What does that translate to in meters? Uh, should be four meters. Okay, so it's just one one four. We're staggered at the moment. Yep. Yeah. It would usually be eight. Yeah. So I'll shoulder check uh, Aiden mm -hmm. and see if I can see. Uh, Whatever blasted us. Okay. Uh, I would say if you want to spend your action doing an awareness, um, I will let you... We'll say this is a difficulty four, um, but I you might be able not. to see it. 
I will not. I see the camera and I heard it attack something. That's so what I'm what I'm doing is that I'm going to raise my blade in front of me, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a stream of red fire that is going to just leap onto where the chimera uh, is, and it's going to explode. Okay. If that works. All right, let's see if I can roll a spell thingy. Uh, I have two bonus die, right, because of the... Uh, you have um, plus two to the resolve. Um, oh, is it just so, resolve? I thought it was for any test. No, it's, it's just resolve. Just so resolve. Oh, no, no. Any future fear. Um, uh, all right. But... Uh, it is important that because you're using a psychic power, uh, you do have to add an additional wrath die. Okay, that is done. So uh, let's see if the macro works. Oh, hello. All right, that means you're rolling on perils. Uh, but what, yeah, was, but, uh, what, uh, uh, what was the DN for the power? Uh, five. Then you pass. In fact, and you could just... shift one of your sixes for uh, an additional uh, severity. Yeah, I... Uh... That would not help. I need two additional, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's two four plus one ED damage or two to make it a large blast. At the moment, it's a medium blast, which means it affects three targets. Yeah, so it affects uh, affects quite a number of things. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so peril. Oh, ah, shit. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Nice. All right, we'll we deal with that. Quick. We'll we'll deal with that in a moment. But uh, go ahead and roll me your damage on this. And uh... so toughness. Oh, the damage you meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's make it go boom. <laughs> oh, that's right. The damage on spells doesn't work. Uh, so that's just going to be fourteen. Uh, it's fourteen damage. Okay. And they are and they are burning. Uh, any AP on that? No, it's just big boom of fire. Well, uh, as it turns out, uh, this Psyker is not exactly the most resilient things in the world. So, uh, neither is the Chimerai. So you fire off uh, this fireball, more or less, and you hear just a yelp from the Warp Beast and then a, a man cursing in, in low gothic. Uh, and you see momentarily that a humanoid form is lit up as he burns and otherwise uh, settles to the deck deceased. Uh, almost similar to how a certain Skywalker uh, thought he had the high ground, and he didn't. <laughs> and now, if anyone, if anyone speaks high gothic, they probably just hit son of a. Yep. Oh. And now we we called. Now we deal with the perils. So everybody within fifty meters uh, is okay. going to suffer minus one agility and minus one strength for the rest of the scene as the supernatural chill and flash frost goes across every surface. And all of you... All the heat out of the air and sent it in that direction. Yeah. Exactly. And all of you need to make me a toughness of a difficulty five, or you suffer a mortal wound. Ah! <laughs> no. Oh my God. Can we soak? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have rune armor, I believe you can soak, but the, yeah, uh, nice. the prince, unfortunately, I believe is going to take <laughs> that mortal wound. Well, once again, uh, I'm proving that for I me, can soak. So I'll be trying to soak that mortal Anything. wound. What mortal wound? <laughs> what, um, what resilience do you guys have, by the way? I have a nine. Uh, eight nine. for me. Eight. Oh, okay. Nine. So, uh, when we try to soak damage, do we just need one success? But I mean, one per wound? Yeah, it's one yes. per point of damage, and you always lose uh, one shock just starting off soak. I looked it up. It's when you soak, when you attempt a soak roll, you automatically lose one yeah. shock. And then it's one shock for every hit that you get uh, that reduces the damage and turns it into shock. Basically, converting wounds into shock. Correct. But we add an extra shock damage. Yes, you you always take at least one shock every time you try to soak. All right, so if we soak, we get two shocks. Correct. At this, okay. Minus one strength, minus one toughness. Sorry. <laughs> I mean agility. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Cheers. Well, at least uh, you won't do anything to us anymore. So uh, the uh, the good news though is that uh, on the Chimerai's turn. Uh, the one that is right next to uh, Evan uh, yep. is not looking great. In fact, it's hobbling around 
and almost in a desperate sort of maneuver, uh, it's going to try and, uh, well, because a psychic power was just used, uh, it is yeah. going to go for uh, our lovely Asenrian. Go for it. All right, so... I think it hits you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's going to hit. Uh, how well <laughs> does it hit you? Uh, my defense is five. All right, in that case, I can shift two of those for extra damage. Yep. And let's see what happens. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Damage, nothing. Not, does 11 damage not do anything? Nope, I have 13. You have 13 12 or 13. It's plus my, uh, my resilience plus my armor. No, no, wait. It, comp it, it calculates your resilience. So yeah, let's let's take a moment. Not I, you know, I trust you. But let's oh, take a moment. No, no I, I don't know. When I said nine resilience, everyone asked me if I had armor. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, no, I should be wounded. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's all right. Uh, so yeah. Um... Uh, let, let let me take. Uh, I was attacked three times. I should have been wounded uh, the first time. He did twelve. Uh, I'll say, you know, it was my error to, to not catch it, so you only need to take the damage from this attack. Alright. So, um, so we're doing this 9, so I'll take 2, so I can soak 2, right? Mm-hmm. Which I do, so I take 3 shock. Yep. Alright, that makes more sense. I was like, damn, they just can't hurt us. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I, I had a sneaking suspicion sense. something was not right, but uh, it's okay, you know? We're learning as we go. Yep, yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. No, 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 you're all. All right, so all I good. believe that uh, our lovely Corsair Prince, and uh, actually, no, I think it is just our Corsair Prince that has not moved. Yeah, um, I'm thinking of doing an athletics interaction attack and okay. trying to suplex one of these dogs, or I could just kill it. But the reason I want to do the interaction attack is if I get a player's call, I want to assert my dominance over the dog, and then I want it to be my friend. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, sure. I'll, but if... I'll... I mean, you don't, you don't have to tell me if that's acceptable yet. Just you know. Yeah, like, let's let's see where the dice it. go first. <gasps> uh, on this one that's closest to me. Okay. Uh, so I get. Uh, so the question is. Mm -hmm. No, I don't have any wrath, but I could steal someone's wrath. Who has wrath? <laughs> I've got one. Come on, boys. There's gonna be more wrath floating around than that. I've got one. I got two. I'll give you one. No, I, I mean, I have to steal it with my That's card. Right. And actually, I just realized it won't work. Well, how likely am I to get two more sixes on four dice, do you think? Uh, each one's a 16% chance, so... Incredibly likely, is what I'm hearing. Oh, decently likely, not... <laughs> I mean, it's almost like I should play my card, The Lost and the Damned. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, Take one well. to three wrath from another. Yeah, player. I change. I change my mind. Don't cho don't choose me. Take <laughs> <laughs> all of my wrath. Um, and then I make a corruption test uh, mm -hmm. equal to the number of wrath taken. So I will. Does anyone want to willingly let me take stuff? I will give you my wrath. Sure. Okay. All right, so, so you still need to make the corruption test. Yes, I'll do. I'll do that first. Hey. Eh? Uh, so, uh, oh, yeah. so it's equal to however many I take. So I just I'm thinking of just taking one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a DN one corruption test. I believe so. Yes. Uh, well, hold up. So, da -da -da -da, uh, default value of three. So I think technically it's a DN four. DN four. Yep. Uh, and so, you are making a conviction test. So you add two yeah. extra dice to it from uh oh yeah nice or no that's resolved not no, conviction. Oh, yeah not that's right i was gonna say that is uh that is resolved yeah. okay so sorry I tried. let's do corruption okay. is it conviction or resist corruption oh yes okay i this is the i've done the conviction test all right so then you pass and uh you don't need to worry about uh taking any corruption Cool. And now I'm going to re-roll this to try and get two more sixes. Do you believe? Yeah, you got to do it <laughs> manually, unfortunately. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so what, four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, sorry, I've got to... Wait, 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 wait. Why is the... Why can't I use the quick dice roller? 
I think you can only reroll the last roll you made. Yeah, you yeah, can only right. reroll the last roll, unfortunately. So, yeah, just slash roll space 46. Mm -hmm. Why can't I just do the the advanced roll? It's not working. Well, like it's it's one. because oh, it's set to the, the past sheet, or the past roll. There you go. So. Got it. Nah, fucking yeah. worthless. Well, nothing. All right, so uh, that is going to be uh, a total of six. Yeah, so... Which they the fail. Sheet. Yeah. So I'm just going to uh, lower this thing's defense by two. Okay. So uh, you suplex it, as you flavored it. And uh, it is, uh, it's not looking great. And uh, I'm actually going to say that as a, uh, you know, that complication for them, that uh, it loses its next turn, so it will not act the next round. Hmm. Ooh. Nice. Uh, however, there is still one uh, Kaimurai remaining. And, uh, hey, Seneca, how you doing there, buddy? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Run! That'll hit. All right. Uh, Let me and see. You can shift as well, yeah, I'm gonna so. shift for one. <laughs> no. There you go. How much does that deal you? All right. Uh, so four. So I have four shock left. I can soak some of this. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let me roll my toughness. And Ooh. all right. One second. Sorry, dog is being pain. Now you're fine. Oh. Uh, so you can oh, soak I'm... two of it. So that's yes. going to be three shock, uh, yes. and then one wound remaining. Yes. So I will two take... two wounds remaining. Two wounds. So yeah, I'm down to four HP and one shock. I'm not doing great because <laughs> I cannot right. soak we'll anymore better, or go unconscious. Mm -hmm. All right. right. Well, uh, the good news is it is a fresh new round, so any one of you can act. I would like to go first. Go for it. All right. I'll oh, turn okay. around with my sword still drawn and try to skewer the camera behind me. Go for it. A lot of complications Oops. tonight. Just yep. so right. many complications. So uh, we'll we'll deal with the complication in a moment, but go ahead and roll me some damage. All right. Uh, what was the defense? How many can I? Uh, uh it was a defense of five, so you can shift one. Well, right. minus two because I dropped its defense from that. So oh, well three. then, yeah, so you can shift, shift two. Okay. Uh, and that would be extra bonus die, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bonus ED. That should be correct. Oh, nice. oh, oh, ow. Uh, I'm gonna let you describe how the hell you skewer the every living hell of that as I roll your complication. Well, the camera, camera was a uh, <laughs> as, as, as prone, lies prone on the floor, so I just literally pierce the blade from uh, top to bottom, and I just skew, skew it to the ground, and I impale it through the floor, and the blade is like synced deep inside both the creature and the floor, and so yeah. I'm trying to jam it away. <laughs> And I will say that that's perfect because with the complication of Weapon Jam, uh, your sword is so stuck into the floor that it will require a tech test at difficulty 2 to get it out. But, well, uh, you know, the Chimerai is dead. So you got that going for you. Yep. All right. So All right. Uh, the remaining one. Well, let me ask. Are you going to spend glory to retain the initiative? Um, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, because like we we, we do we do want our uh, healer to not get murked in the first fight. Yeah. Um. Oh no, that's a guard thing. I was gonna say oh, giant jump in front. Yeah, I I still have my movement, so I can technically put myself in front of Seneca. Can I? Yeah, I would say yeah, you can do that. Uh, yep. That's fair. I'm like shoulder checking you to to yeah yeah oh, that'll that's work. Fine. All right, well, uh, Asenrian, since uh, you've jumped in front, you're going to be the target of this. Yep. And that's a miss. And a miss. Complete miss. All right, so, All right, so uh, Seneca, uh, Glaive, or Ethan? All right, uh, Glaive will whip out the shuriken pistol and fire over Asenrian's shoulder. Okay. Blip blap. Get him. Unfortunately, yeah. no. Shot goes wide. Yep. 
And uh, since there's no more enemies at the moment, uh, it's either Seneca or Raven. Um, do you want to go, Seneca? Or... Yeah, I'll go. Do you have Medicaid? Can you like heal yourself? I do, so I'm going to do that. Step into a corner and patch myself up. Okay, cool. So, um, let's see yeah. how this goes. Um, that's going to be five successes, which... which I believe you only need three. Yeah, so yeah, and then you can shift. I'm gonna shift edge. that to get an extra point of shock back to bring me back up to three shock. Alrighty. Oh, actually, I think you is it mid to beat to uh, to hit someone? Uh, yeah, so yeah. three successes yeah. will handle that, and then I can shift. Shift. No, no, no. Uh, for the camera to attack me, my sword oh, is okay. jammed into the floor. My sword has parry, which is why I have defense five against melee attack. So I have defense uh, four. You want the four? Ooh, good catch. I thank you for yep. being honest. Uh, so yes, yeah, I, I was checking the parry to see if it was modifying anything. Yeah, fair enough. No, I so uh, it would it would hit me. All right, I appreciate you being honest. So uh, I'll tell you what, I will reduce its damage by one for you being honest. All right. Uh, so that only does nine damage. AP minus Zero. two. Zero. All right, there you go. Nine because my resilience is nine. Perfect. Okay. So that does D three shock because it equals your resilience. Mm -hmm. Oh, does it? Okay. <laughs> So let me roll that uh, d3. Take two shock. Uh, I've got four shock remaining. Alrighty. And then, yeah, Mr. Corsair Prince, can you bring it home? Should I tech test and then kill this dog? Like, tech test to give you a sword out, just in case. I'm okay, I'm okay, just kill it. Okay. I'm going to use my pistole uh, in melee. Alright. To shoot it in the face. Let's go. Yeah, you get it. Cool. Uh, what's... I was just going to... Uh, I can't shift that because it's defense is five, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Correct. Okay. So that's just... Uh, a whole bunch be... of twos. It is a lot of twos. Yeah, I know, right? How annoying is that? So that's going to be uh, just ten damage. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, for sake of argument, that uh, you are able to uh, scar this thing pretty well. And uh, it is actually on its turn. As we start a new round, it's just going to run away. Uh, fading out of existence. Come back. Oh. I want to get an, an attack before he leaves. Nope, yeah, I'm going to say it goes ephemeral uh, as you start swinging into it. Fair enough. Cool. Well, I'm going to go get my whip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to patch a sentry up real quick while he's getting his sword out, if he'll allow that. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not... I only took shots, so I'm not bleeding or anything, but uh, I'm You're no really shot shot. gonna get one, two, three, four shock back. Nice. Who does? Uh, a Sinrian. Nice. Well, so let me, there, let it's me a see. complication there. Yeah, I was gonna say, let me ask are you guys still just like in the moment doing a Medicaid test, or are you actually spending an hour to regroup? In the moment. Uh, in no, the we moment. gotta get out of here. We're not yeah. Okay. <laughs> Then I believe then, we'll be checking ahead to see what the deal, uh, what the deal is up there while everyone's sort of recuperating. Okay. Then the complication is going to be that any future Medicaid tests used against him or used on him are going to be at a plus two DN. Okay. That's that's fine. Given that it's you field person. <laughs> I do what I have to to make sure that you can continue to fight as long as we are still on this mission. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so question: the uh, the the weapon's technically jammed, but it's more impaling to the floor. So, do I need tech, or do I need more like bronze? You know, like hey, to don't, put it out. Don't, of the floor? don't worry about it. Let's look. Don't sweat it, buddy. Uh, I would say I'd let. I, well, there you go. He pulls it out <laughs> and gets you a point of glory. No, fine. <laughs> Useful <laughs> guys. I appreciate it. No worries, buddy. You still got my stone, yeah? Wait. I do. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Oof. And uh, I think uh, this is a perfect opportunity to take our five to ten minute break. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to mute the stream and all that. So if you guys could be back in about ten minutes at the most. All right. See you then.
Okay, and we're back from well. break early. Uh, so, uh, in the aftermath, as uh, you guys sort of uh, recuperate, heal one another, uh, I will give you the opportunity that if you spend a point of glory, uh, something will pop up on the terminal that you were interfacing well, with chasing. before uh, this whole thing went down. Yeah, let's I do that. Better. So, uh, when you look at the terminal, uh, you see that uh, it is displaying a... You, you remember how before I said that it was showing alarms and other signs that the, the black holes have been breached? Um, yes. It is now zoomed in on a particular section of the black holes uh, and says that there is a significant increase in psychic phenomena in this area. That's probably our mark. And mm -hmm. because I'm being nice, I will say that uh, it does display a route uh, to get there. Uh, um, can I actually sidle up and do another tech test to try and um, sort of find a kind of more like optimal, like I'm talking about burning that we could like burn through floors and stuff, get the blueprints up and just be like melted through the floor here, you know, drop down this shaft. Gotcha. Kind of uh, I would say that this would be a difficulty. I'm going to call it a five because, um, you know, obviously yeah, you're, you're not, not a Monkai and you know, yeah, but Hey, uh, right. with five, you also get a point of glory. Very nice. Um, yeah. Uh, I would say that this will cut your travel time in half meaning that you will only spend an additional hour in this place before you arrive at your quarry. Or so I'm is the that. I actually have one additional thing I want to add in here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Quicken on the party. Okay. Yes. Which would basically double our move. Then it would be only 30 minutes. But I think you still need to make the Psychic Mastery test, which is important. I do. So... And you oh, rolled... No. Well, because no. remember, you also have to roll an additional Wrath yeah. Die, so roll so another Wrath Die. That extra Wrath Die is... A six. A six. So, so you, you get a glory. Get <laughs> oh. Okay. I'll take it. That's good. Yeah. Warp's so. fickle. Yeah, gotta love the warp. Alright. So I, I forget, uh, do you still have to roll perils if you... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you still have to roll perils, unfortunately. Yep, but hey, it's start. Hey, well, we can run away from anything now, so mm -hmm. <laughs> don't worry. Perils of the warp, twisted flesh. The energies of the warp unleash a concussive for a corruptive force <laughs> oh, in the physical fuck. form of the psyker and all no! creatures within ten meters. All affected characters, i.e., all of you, must make a corruption <laughs> test. D and seven. And those who fail gain 1d3 corruption and suffer one mortal wound. <laughs> you, <laughs> you anus, you kill us. Uh, all right, so, so, so basically, all right, we're, we're going to go fast, and there's just this shockwave as we start running. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, this is a comedy of errors, and I love it. Shit. Uh, let's see, where's the... I gain two corruption. corruption. Oh, no. Uh, I get a glory. Let's see, where's the resist corruption? Oh, yeah. Here oh, is we it, go. Oh, is, it, is it resist corruption, or is it... It should conviction? just be a resist corruption, yeah. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, I it's uh, well, on I the attribute matters. section. I, I don't think it actually matters too much. Because yeah. they're both the same for me. Ah, oh, right. great. We're so, all a little well, corrupt from this one. I, I'm just going to point out the irony of this. By speeding yourselves up, you ended up taking the same corruption you would have gotten... By not yeah, running. I know. So, yeah. uh, do, do we do we each roll individually? I'm gonna say each of you can roll individually. Sure. Um, can how much glory do we have left? Uh, you have four at the moment. Oh, oh I kind of want to steal two die and make sure my I don't get corruption, but that is incredibly selfish. I'm, I mean, wouldn't uh, you then risk a corruption test anyway? Uh, no, this well, isn't his oh, no, glory. Glory's a yeah. glory's yeah. a what yeah. you call it? Team Group reasons. Goal, yeah, 
I'm okay with not using yeah. glory on myself on the grounds <laughs> that I kind of brought this on us. I didn't bring this on us. <laughs> so, again, good news, bad news. Good That's news, fine. you get there in 30 minutes. Bad news, kind of a little You're bit You're just as corrupt. And you also do need to deal with the mortal wound that you all just took. Yep, yep done that. Uh, now then, where do I note down corruption? Uh, let me it's open... Under, page. Trades. And again, remember, uh, if you are soaking it here and you succeed, you do take uh, two shock. Yep, did. There we go. All right. Like the difficulty of that test was the same as possession by a warp entity. What the hell? Yeah, that's uh, that's a really bad peril to roll. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> All right. So, uh, again, you you guys have a path to... Oh, wait. Uh, there is an, there is a special effect with the Wrath die. Mm -hmm. If you if you roll a, a 1, the test fails and you get twice the amount of corruption. But if you roll a 6, yeah, if you roll a 6, the DN of the test is reduced by 2. Which some of us, which means that uh, Glaive... Yeah, I would have been... I passed. All right, yeah, then Glaive, you pass, and you don't and get that corruption. I'm at four, and I rolled a six. I will use my uh, one of my glory points to have an extra die. Yeah, yeah. Also that. means I get to avoid that shock. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh man. Which nope. is fitting. Yeah. Again, I May appreciate I you guys keeping us glory. honest. I now use a glory to her. <laughs> I am an untouchable golden and sky blue god. Can I use a glory to uh, get an extra die there? But I mean, that's no. that's up to you to uh, debate among yourselves as players. Uh, yeah, well, um, I mean, we've got glory to spare. Yeah, we got four glory right now. So. I, I I used one because I was one away from succeeding. I right, I'll take one away. Okay, I am two away. So in fact, uh, it's fine. I got rid of mine, so we'll have two left as a party. Thank you okay? All right, All right. no one. So let me just finish getting your tokens set up here on the next <laughs> map, and then I will push you guys over. Woo. All right, That's so brilliant. again, uh, you guys know where you're going. You you know the specific and most direct route to get there. So 30 minutes later, uh, you arrive on this map, which I will describe momentarily after I get it set up so that everyone can see what's going on. Mm. All right. So, uh, what you find yourselves doing is you turn down the uh, turn down a corner and proceed down what you hope is going to be the final corridor. And at the end of this passageway, you can see these swirling lights as the passageway opens up into a large atrium. In the middle of this space, approximately three meters off the ground, is a swirling mass of metal and psychic power. In the center of it all is your target, or so you surmise. Uh, Lopata sits in a half lotus as blankets of madness and force warp around him. Uh, I would say that at this point, I need a DN3 insight or awareness from anyone who would like to uh, study him or try to get something that way. If you want, you can also roll a DN3 psychic mastery, and you might be able to get something that way. I will try the psychic mastery. Glory. Given that my psychic powers haven't been my friends. Okay. I'm just so, thinking of the three that I got. Looks like you all succeeded and got a point of glory in the process. Very nice. <laughs> Alright. So can we shift so we can shift extra, extra sixes into glory? So oh. for tests. I'd like to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'd only... like to spend because I got like three extra sixes. So yeah. I'd Alrighty. like to spend one on glory. I'll grab an extra three. All right. So, uh, what you learn is the following. Uh, it is very clear to you that this is anything but a man in meditation. Uh, his expression is one of strained pain, everything from veins bulging, muscles tensing, and hands clawed in agony. And at the same time, uh, those of you that rolled Psychic Mastery, uh, you are able to sense that there is a desperate battle of control occurring in this man's mind. His latent abilities have been magnified a hundredfold. And frankly, it's not a it's you know a minor miracle that he's not burned out, exploded, 
possessed or otherwise succumb to the overbearing pressure of she who thirsts. And is almost as if to uh, show how much power is on display here, uh, two chimera uh, emerge from the, uh, the walls, the ceilings, the floors, and they're not focused on you, they're focused on Lopata. And one of them uh, does attempt to uh, lash out and uh, attempt to make contact with the bubble. And the moment it does, um, a wave of power washes out from the uh, the Monkai. And immediately the, chim the Chimerai is burned in blue-white fire as it shrivels and dies on the spot. Hmm. So that's um, the scene you guys find yourselves in. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to deal with it as you will, but just remember, you are on a ticking time clock. I think I'd like to figure out how this device works, and I think tech is probably going to be the best way to do that. I kind of don't want you guys to do any more psychic shit. <laughs> I, as as someone who is completely exhausted by the fact that I've ripped, I'm half dead and I've gone down to one shock and returned from the brink. Yeah. Yes. No more. No more messing with the warp for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then I, yeah, I, so, um, so the swirling metal around him does it look like it's some sort of containment cage or? Yes. Uh, it is almost as if someone deliberately entrapped him in this. Now, whether or not this was something that the black hole people did or something that happened after the fact is unsure. But I will remind you of a fact of when this vessel crashed. It has been here for two to three years. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which suggests to me he's probably the thing keeping this entire place stable. Yeah. So we gotta be yeah. ready to run the moment he's down. You should all you should all step away from me. I'll take care of it. Okay, okay. Uh. <laughs> Uh, let's all step outside and have shuriken pistols at the ready to fire a salvo. Yep. Actually, sorry, I have—I think I have a good idea. Can we all leave the room while he does whatever he's going to do? I'm just <laughs> yeah. very conscious of, like, psychic bash backlash. Yeah, I'm stepping out. Okay. Yep. I'm yeah. clutching my guts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Glaive will stay. Okay. It's all up to you, buddy. <laughs> so what's, right. what you doing? So in a similar fashion, then when I, uh, you know, exploded the uh, the psycho, I raised my sword. But instead of um, having a tiny bit of fire flying first, uh, flying forward, there'll be a giant beam coming out of my sword as I will try and activate molten beam. Ah, it's a very good power. I love molten beam. It's amazing. <laughs> so, uh, oh my God. what did so, I say? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you might as well go for the hill. Uh, question: yes. Question: If I if I use wrath, do I reroll the uh, the one that rolled the wrath as well? No, I believe that uh, you cannot reroll complications. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you can't. No, no that's correct. It'll it'll only roll reroll black dice with the smart die roller. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm still gonna reroll because I want to just explode that dude. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow! 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 wow. There's gonna be a lot of exploding. Yeah, so there's no DN on that. It's the target's defense, my DN. Uh, let me look at his defense. Um, yeah. Yeah, so technically he counts as having a force shield, but you beat it, no problem. Uh, you could shift two of those. All right, then I'll take an extra ED of damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, should we do the complication first or that? Yes, let's see what your perils is, and then we'll then we'll we'll go from there. Oh dear! Oh, oh, oh boy! Oh, oh no. dear! All right, so roll damage oh. as I oh, parse fuck. how to deal with that. You you oh gosh! <laughs> I'm glad that I stepped outside now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I might be corrupted. You're gonna mutate. You oh, fool! Dear. Yep. So I, I'm gonna suffer two d six more wounds. So let's roll that. Awfully fitting for how strong oh, of a that's eight oh. awful wounds. Oh my oh. god, he's down. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna soak. I'm gonna soak. Whatever I can. Oh yeah. Shield, shield, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Ooh, I'm not corrupted. I have four, four corruption points. I'm one away from being corrupted. That's helpful. <laughs> oh wait, no, I can resist the corruption. Uh, no, I think the no, DM, the yeah. DM is yeah. the DN is three by default. Yeah. Yep. No. On, on the plus side, Lexus Lopata is inside the blast radius for this. Yes. Yes, indeed. It, it's a ten. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But, but actually, my, no. Uh, he might really like corruption, though. In so. case the molten beam doesn't work, the mortal wounds from the overload might work. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say right. the. Uh, All right. So let's see what I can soak. Yeah, I'll say so. Oh, wow. Wow. I, I have six shock, which means I can only soak five. Mm -hmm. So I will take three wounds, and all of my shock goes away. Okay. Remember, if you hit zero shock, you pass out. So you want to... Oh, I'll take an extra uh, wound then. So yeah. that was in the original, but now it's just that you're exhausted. Okay, um, my book's outdated then. Yeah, um, they've, they've but... pushed out a Rada for that. Um... Gotcha. Cool. No, oh, that's good to know. So he can, right. he can only do one test per turn. He can only do one thing. No, no, I'll, I'll take an extra wound. Any more shock you get counts as mortal wounds. Yep. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll just take an extra wound and uh, keep one shock so I can do more than just run away. That's well, I, you know, it. I don't think you can... I, I could be wrong, but I think it's either you have to take the two or, like, you can't split yeah. up the six. I could be wrong. I th Yeah, I think that is the case. You can't... Uh, I, I, did, I did take the two. I did take the two already. Because I, I have six successes. I was taking eight wounds, but I only have six shocks. I take one shock away because I try to soak. Mm -hmm. So I only have five shocks, which means I can only soak four. I can only soak four wounds because I only rolled sixes on this. Okay, then you, so did, I, you did it right. All right. Uh, and now, now let's see how much uh, boom boom goes on. And don't remember, uh, Glaive, you're also taking uh, 1d3 yep. mortal wounds. I'll taking 1d3 mortal wounds, and I have to make a toughness test or be blinded for a round. Mm -hmm. Oh god, don't be blinded, guys. So for those you know, that... Uh, that's one mortal wound. Yeah. Oh, for, uh, for those who can't see what the result was on stream, uh, basically what happened is he rolled the Psychic Overload, Perils of the Warp, which means that as he fires this beam at Lopata, a streaming warp energy bursts from his eyes and mouth that flash in every direction and penetrates all living things surrounding them. Mm. All right, and now for the blindness check, which I'm probably going to fail. 19 damage. 19 damage. Nice. Jeez. So oh, yeah. you're blinded. Oh, yeah. Which uh, under effects means that you're a plus four DN for all site related tasks. all site related tasks. Only for one round, luckily. Yeah, well, here's the thing about that. So, oh, no. <laughs> the good news is that, you know, your beam does have the intended... Well, between the beam and your, you know, explosion, uh, it does have the intended effect. The beam pierces through whatever is shielding him and emolates Lopata on the spot. I mean, there's not even anything left. He literally disintegrates in a scream of terror and otherwise psychic backlash as that entire sort of cog and him just almost explode and evaporate. However, the moment you do that, several things happen at once. Uh, not only do two more Chimerai show up, but also something that you as Eldar fear above all else. Since, as you properly suspected, since he probably was the one providing any sort of stabilizing effect, the floodgates have been opened, and emerging from tears in reality is not one, not two, oh, God. but three <laughs> demonettes. <laughs> Time to run! Get run! <laughs> Alright, so let me throw everybody into initiative order here. Uh, it's gonna be a doozy. Okay, so are we still outside the room? Uh, I'm going yeah. to say that you are, uh, for sake of argument, you are 10 meters outside the room. Okay. So you're probably gonna have to run just to get back in range. Uh, yeah. Alright, so a question. Technically, I did my action to blast the dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just an action, not a full action, so can I start running away before we roll initiative? 
I would say yes, you could start running away. However, I will point out that somebody is blind at the moment. Uh, okay, can I, can I, I was standing right next to you when yeah, you went yeah. new. I grab, you, I, grab, I grab you by the shoulder and stop pushing you. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so not as fast as I could, but I stopped pushing him away. Run! Run, you fool! <laughs> All right, so my next question is for Quicken. How long does Quicken last? Oh, I'm sure he has same days. power, I think. Yeah. So as long as I keep doing it as narratively fits. Or okay. in- oh, yeah, sorry. It was you that cast it, not yet. Yeah. All right, so what I will say then is uh, let me check the speeds on the demonettes because the Chimerai only have a speed of seven. So your default run will outrun them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the demonettes do match your speed, though, so they could match. They could keep up with you. So what I will say is that uh, we're going to sort of do this in a nebulous fashion, then actually turn based. Um, yeah. But if you spend your like, if you roll a quicken task, uh, mm-hmm. I will say you will be able to outrun the demonettes. I I'm okay with that. But just remember. Okay. Remember. Oh. Perhaps I but should I'm say blinded, this. So I'll be doing it at plus four DM. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> what I will say though is because Lopata and the stabilizing effect is gone, you're rolling three total extra wrath die. So for a total four wrath dice. <laughs> um, yep. Question. Can, uh, I, can, I spend, can I can I spend the glory to have you know those two cameras in the back? They saw the creatures appearing next to them. Maybe they're more interested in them than us, and maybe they're going to distract them for a couple of rounds. I'll allow it, sure. Hmm. That way, for at least at least a few seconds, we only have one after us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I might do a tech test and try and activate my webway keystone, so we can just jump out of this situation. Or it might like it won't just open one in front of me. I think I, I have to locate. Somewhere yeah, you have to locate then... an entrance, unfortunately. Yeah. So I'll do the tech test to see if there is one around. Yeah. And then I think it's a separate. I don't know if it's a separate test to like oh, jump into. Uh, let's whatever. consult the. Uh, let's the start item with here. that before I perils yet again. <laughs> yeah. Let's um, see. Ah, uh, I am like too short. Yeah, I was gonna say I, for my sake, I want to know what you have to roll here. Uh, yes, it's a DN five. So actually, you pass. <gasps> yes. <laughs> Okay, what do I find? Do I find anything, actually? Probably a better question. I'm going to say that if you spend a point of glory, there is indeed a tear in uh, reality that you could use as a webway portal. Let's oh, but it's like that. into the warp first, is it? Uh-huh. So you would uh, be taking some corruption to go through it, but it is uh, a way out of here. Like a test or flat corruption? Uh, I would say everybody would take... Well, you could still resist it, but it would mm. be 1d3 corruption. Oh, boy. Okay. It's that or potentially perils and get even more corruption. I'll take the devil, you know, if in my opinion. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, we do not want to be using psychic powers in here at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> um, all right. Well, is it sorry? Is it like right in front of me, or do we have to run to get to it, or what's the deal? Uh, I'll say, since you spent a point of glory, uh, it can be relatively nearby within a round. Okay. Which is um, honestly all you need. Um, because not only are the Chimerai distracting the demonettes, um, but the demonettes are, of course, having to fight their uh, warp kin, as it were. Um, so the only thing we need to roll here before you make your escape is Glaive's navigation, because he is <laughs> blind. So, uh, what I'm going to say is that Glaive, this is going to be a dn let's make it a dn6 because i'm gonna spend some ruin and be a dick uh it's gonna be a dn6 which will go up to 10 which will go up to 10 (laughs) and if you fail this you do not run with the rest of the group you run distance uh according to scatter oh gosh Oh, I'm pushing. Right, so, so is this? So what? T- what skill am I rolling? Uh, you are rolling an awareness. Okay. Um, I'll spend a point of glory to get an extra a bonus die. Okay. Just in case. You can do it. I, gonna... Yeah, you can do it after. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll save it then. 
Because I'm going to need to roll a whole bunch of sixes. Mm -hmm. That said, I do have one wrath remaining to re-roll. Now's the time. Now is the time. <laughs> I will start by re-rolling that. Okay. Can't well, re-roll can that I complication, re though. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think uh, Glaive might be walking off of a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's Don't see. go, Glaive. Um, uh, Alright, so I'll just re-roll and ignore what the Wrath dice is. Yeah, it oh, should shit, handle that it. automatically. Oh, no, I just it's... hit the re-roll. Yeah. I just realized Asenrian has both those stones. <laughs> oh. yep. Okay, so that's a four. That's okay. a no. That is a no. So I now need to know... No, 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 no. You didn't use your glory, you can use it. True. What's yeah, your yeah. yeah. DM? Ten. Huh? Oh, never mind. Yeah, I was going to say, the DM is <laughs> ten, oh, so... So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll save the wrath. I might need it to stay alive. All right. So yeah. I need to know uh, your speed is eight. Yes. Yes. I need you to roll me one D six to see which way you scatter. Wait, but, but I'm pushing it. Well, you know, he, uh, he's he having, uh, he's action. having a bad day. That's the one. So, so what happens is he pushes back into you and, uh, Senrian, you and Glaive go nowhere. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> I'm I can't dead. see a thing <laughs> in either way. Just go in the same fucking direction I do. <laughs> so, uh, I'm as sorry, this comedy... I can't sense anything over the gigantic warp portal. <laughs> now that you see the gigantic warp portal, it's time to go. Yeah. So, Actually, I am going to say I, that I, I am going to I am roll. beginning to see... I am beginning to see the color angry. The color angry. <laughs> nice. Oh, this is not this is not great. All right. I'm so good. because uh, you, you know because I do want to still roll for them, I'm going to roll for the demonettes first. Then I'll roll for any chimera that survive. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, no, screw you. I'm using my glory. I want to go. Oh well, this <laughs> this is this is them on the chimera, on not them. on you. Yeah. Yeah. So you're fine. Uh, this this is more I, for I cinematic effect. I'm not fine. I have three wounds left. <laughs> All right, so that demonet fails. That demonet does tremendously well, and that one also hit it very well. Oh my gosh! Damage on one, it's dead. Damage on two, it's super dead. So yeah, uh, those two chimera are gonzo. Let's get uh, through this portal. Well, I and that. now I am no longer blind. Yep. <laughs> I just need oh. to do the one attack for the Chimerae for shits and giggles, and then it will be your guys' turn again. Alright, so for shits yeah, and giggles, that is... enough? Nope. Oh, no, it is a six. That is enough. So, for shits and giggles, Demonette doesn't even care. Okay. Alright, so, now I believe the only person who hasn't gone is Seneca. And then it will yeah. be a new round. Get in the hole! <laughs> I've already... Yeah, Senri and I would only make things worse with. Um, about all I can do right now is Medicaid or just dip out on the party. and I don't want to No, just, just get out. <laughs> Go. Someone has to make it back. Yeah, fine. I'll dip Go! out. Go! Alright, so <laughs> I'll remove you from the map. So Seneca steps through the portal. That is his action. And it is a Dude. new round... Which it means, uh, technically, you guys can go again. Or, I well, know, go. well... No, wait, I was uh, going to pick you guys up and run. Well, see, I kind of have three ruins sitting here, okay. so okay. I'm just going to spend... Ah, the... you! I put it on the ball first. I'm just going to spend <laughs> that point of ruin, and uh, I'm going to let uh, this demonette go. I and, did uh, get one glory for the party with my resist corruption test, though. Yeah. Oh, uh, no... What's the base DN for resist corruption? Is it DN3? DN3. Cool, I, I resisted the corruption this time. So, uh, Glaive, you start seeing again. Yeah. And guess what you start seeing? Not what I wanted to see. Not what you want to see at all. That is a demonette. Oh, God. Is he feared now or terrored or something? Uh, yeah, technically, there was supposed to be a fear test that the moment you saw them, but I'm going oh, to say well, because I, he didn't see them. This is the moment them, I've seen them. Yeah, yeah right? 
You are at plus two to your resolve, though. Yeah, I was going to say, so you have plus two resolve. Uh, it is only a fear three, so it's a DN of five, or a DN of four for you. All right, so hang on. Yeah, so two bonus dice. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because that guy who just got the hell out of Dodge told you something that made you feel good. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. Uh, you'll be fine. Uh, it's a two. Uh, you know what? I think I'll spend my one remaining wrath to re-roll that. Okay. No, have okay. I? No, I already re-rolled, didn't I? Uh, yeah, you did re roll to uh, try and get rid of your blindness. So, yeah. All right, which uh, means no. unfortunately, any uh, any task related to uh, dealing with the demonette is uh, at a bigger difficulty for you. At a plus one. Um, so let me roll. Let me let me first roll its weapon skill. I think it hits you. What is your defense? <sighs> Uh, would normally be eight, but it's plus... Hang on, just a second. Let me double check how that wording works. Not resilience, defense. Yeah, defense, not resilience. So, parry... Uh, defense is, uh, three, cause, uh, it's... This is melee, I'm assuming. Yeah, this is melee. Alright, so that means I can shift two dice. Which means... Uh, oh dear, I forgot it has penetrating. That is a problem. We don't not to, yeah, not we to worry, I am wearing Ruben armor, I can ignore AP. Oh, well, alright, so that's, uh, that's gonna be 11 damage, uh, to your, uh, to your resilience. Alright, resilience 8. So, so 3 damage. Three. Uh, yep, so, trying to soak 3 damage. Mm-hmm. Which you do. I Which soak three do. damage. So oh, good work. Down to one shock. And now that it is your one. turn. That was probably the most <laughs> safest person to get hit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Senrian, are you going to be okay running off on your uh, own? Aren't you going to murder this thing first? I mean, he... Actually, yeah, no, this thing's going to be able to chase us down, because... Yeah, we, it's yeah. quick. <laughs> mm-hmm. We have two witch blades against it. That's just too much. <laughs> yep. Okay, let, just... Let, let, let's shank it. Don't roll comps. <laughs> yeah. Don't roll complications. Alrighty. Let's roll with the witchblade. Uh, do, does it have a resilience of fifteen or higher? Nope. Ooh. Actually, for a demonette, for a demon of the warp, it's got a very piss poor resilience. It's a lesser demon. Yeah, it's really hard because you got to use your willpower to, to like hit it. Right. Uh, I will say though that uh, your target defense is a six. So that's a no. That is a no. Uh, you can multi-action, which means you could try again. I think, um, but it would be at a higher difficulty. Or you could multi-action and run. I think, I think I'm going to multi-action and try to try to run. Yeah. All right, which means... Actually, can I multi-action to disengage? Yes. Yes. I think. We'll say yes. Why not? We'll say yes. But then you can't move. I can't? Uh, we, only have one, we only have two actions between a move and an action, right? Well, he's no, multi-actioning, so, yeah, so it's at a higher difficulty. Yeah. Um, it increases uh, the DM. Let's do yeah. this. Uh, let's do this. Let me look at a skill. I oh, know. I have to say, I'm making multi action before I roll any tests. Though. Yeah, but yeah. I'll be nice and say because again, this is the first session. You know, we can look past that. So if you want a multi action, you can multi action. Yeah, so attack, disengage, and start heading out and like yelling at Israel and just, just come on, get out of there. All right. So the demonette is not going to get an attack on you. Uh, which is good, because it probably would have hit you. Um, my question for you, Glaive, do you go through the portal or no? Do I... Do you go through the portal or no? Uh, not yet, no. I wait to make sure Isenrian gets through. Okay, and you sit there with the Corsair Prince. Now, uh, do you want to spend a point of glory so that uh, Isenrian can go? Or Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, definitely. Uh, Oh, thank you. Oh, oh yeah. Quick question. <clears throat> mm-hmm. In my videos of fighting everything in the galaxy, have I ever fought those creatures? I would say that you've maybe uh, 
met blades with them before yes so how uh, hard to kill is it uh, what are you looking for exactly hard to hit not can hard I, to kill if I, if I do what I did to the chimera last time can I skewer this thing in one go I would say yes uh, it, uh, it, it it doesn't have the best wounds in the world Run, you have it's to pull. It, that's the problem. Yeah, it's, it's the hitting. <laughs> They're hard to hit. They're not hard to kill. And it can, and it can like full defense anyway. Mm-hmm. So it can. Just, it attacks. So you can full defense into the next turn. So it just it would takes lose your turn. turn. Yeah, it would lose its next turn, but you wouldn't like. Oh, it's crudis. Um, uh, disengage and run. Disengage yeah, fuck that. Run. Uh, jump through the portal. All right, so the demonet has already gone, which means uh, all three of you can step through the portal the to portal? safety. Where and on going? your heels are the... Yeah, make sure you do your corruption. And as you do that, mm-hmm. uh, on your heels are the howling wails of frustrated demons as the yeah. webway portal closes behind you. And all of you, uh, strangely enough, all of you show up back on the bridge. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I also resist corruption. Thank Kane. The uh the farseer just sort of blinks, you know, rises out of her chair and says, "Oh yes." <laughs> I land on I land on her. Oh. Oh, hi. <laughs> well, oh. I'm going to take the fact that you've appeared on my bridge that the mission was a success. Yes, it yeah, was. Let's ball. get out of here. Well, uh, the, the other ship is still on the surface. You should call it back. Yeah, I would prefer not to leave anybody behind, but I am detecting, or at least sensors are, I don't even need to reach out with my mind, that that place is going to hell. Oh, yeah. Yep, shoot it. Yeah, yeah uh, t- it. turns yeah. out uh, our friend Lexus was the only thing keeping things more or less sane. It would be for the best that this planet stops being a planet. Yeah. Fun. I, uh, I, I vote for shooting, shooting lots of stuff at the planet. Right. Gunnery officer, covering fire for our vessel. Uh, Helm officer, prepare an escape vector. And uh, sure enough, uh, you guys see on the view screen a very cinematic shot of uh, her vessel firing salvo after salvo, covering the uh, drop vessel's uh, escape. And the moment the, uh, the craft is back aboard, the helmsman punches it and sends you guys back into the webway. And huh. you can breathe easy because your mission was a success. Yay. So Yay. Uh, that is where we will end our first session. Uh, how did you guys like it? What did you like? What did you not like? Uh, things like that. Oh, God. All the All, the all those ones. I know. <laughs> Right. That was, uh, that was brutal. That was good. Let's, was... Go, let's go somewhere a little less chaosy next time. We're, uh, we're, we're all... All psychers, let's go to a black ship. What could go wrong? I know, right? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm not a psycho, and I'd like to point out the only reason I got hurt was because of all of you guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, I think the most damage uh, Avon we, took was we, from we you guys. Established... Yeah, I think we hurt ourselves more than anything else did. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm going to refute that fact because I got my guts torn out by dogs. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> this is true. You got that, yeah. Yeah. All right. Point so, is, I suffered lots of corruption. I didn't need. Uh, I do have to look up what is appropriate to give you in terms of build points, and I want it to be on stream because that way there will be a written record of it. Uh, right. Question: Is there a yes. medic on this uh, on this ship? Because I'm blading the fuck out. Oh yeah, yeah. I... There. Don't worry about it. Between this session and next, you'll get the okay. proper treatment. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, like I. Uh... Electricity right. came out of my butt, so, you know. I can help yeah. patch you up as well, so we're, yeah. we're in the clear there. Okay, so, uh, in reading page 401, a good amount to award is five. Uh, okay, I'm going to award you uh, six build points. Okay. Ooh. And, of course, yeah, you say. are you are free to spend uh, six uh, that six on whatever you like. Um, you also want to keep track of how much you've earned because once you have gotten 20, you can rank up, which is kind of important. Um, Very. trying to see if there's anything else. 
Nope. I think that's uh, all that needs to happen on stream. So players, stick around for a little bit longer. But to anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube, etc., etc., thank you for tuning in, and we will see these guys next Tuesday. Bye-bye.